You are now tuned in to the Public Enemies, a.k.a. the Spark Foundation, a.k.a. Black DX, a.k.a. the Authors of Paid in Full, a.k.a. Undisputed Air Force Ones, a.k.a. the High Conics. The fact that it's Black History Month, we could just just be niggas and be you know just do nigga shit, and it's like what what can you do about it? Hey, somebody off. Hey, somebody brought to the news like, hey man, what if reparations was you got paid double what you got paid at work for the whole month of February? That's it. And I was like, no, nah, nigga, we need like three months, nigga. I need February, September, December, cause it's Christmas. And uh, ah man. <laughs> that we get that all that only black people get double. Nah, nigga, I need my forty acres, my G. I know Duh. I'm never gonna get that. Duh. What are we gonna do with four, what are we gonna do with a mule? I don't. I, I didn't say anything about a mule. <laughs> I just want the land. There ain't no good the government mule. This land is your land. This land is my land. Until we took it. Oh. Okay, so because I'm the white man. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> is is Happy Black History Month a thing? Yeah, uh, nigga. Yeah, well, hey, Happy Black History Month. Merry Black History Month, nigga. Merry niggas. Black History Month. Happy Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa, nigga, History Month and shit. That shit lasts forever. All right, man. Hey, hey, hey. hey. My Black History is 365. Straight up, man. Didn't McDonald's do like a something like a like a Black History three sixty? Yeah, that shit lasted for sixty five. What's up, with, man? All right, just <laughs> I gotta. I can't remember what the fuck the commercials then was, but I, I I swear to God they did this. It for sure was McDonald's, and they for sure didn't do it for a year. Okay, all right. Well, there you go. There you go. Welcome to another episode of the Public Enemies Podcast. This is episode ninety three. I go by the name of Graham. I got my nigga Jizzle with me. Tron is on the ones and twos. He's back, and I know y'all getting bored. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> no man. Oh, no. Everybody, low management, everybody. Hey, man. Really? First off, of HCL. Yep. Man. Gotta have it. High Gotta ankle sprain. We did three weeks of the high ankle sprain. Yeah, you know, it is, it is like that. Started as, a, you know what I'm saying, as a, as, a, as a, just a regular ankle sprain. And then it was like, oh, shit, it might be the calf. Yeah, but what's, what's, like, what's a low ankle sprain? I don't know what a low ankle sprain is, you know? Hey, whoa, has anybody ever got a low ankle sprain? <laughs> That's a question. Why don't we bring in our uh, special contributor Woj to answer that question? Oh, y'all niggas thought y'all niggas thought we didn't know Woj. You niggas thought we didn't know Woj. Nigga, like, <laughs> nigga, like history, what well, nigga? We got ties. <laughs> Thank you to everybody for tuning in last week, and thank you once again to the Black Announce Table for coming around and fucking with us. Uh, this week we've got uh, another special guest. We've got a good friend of mine, Mr. Cam Hawkins. Cam Hawkins, yes, indeed. Dope dude. Uh, uh, South Congress podcast host, PW Torch contributor, East Coast cast, fan-sided DDT writer. Yes, I read this directly off of his Twitter bio. All around great guy. We got him coming up on the show, ladies and gentlemen. But before we get into that, what's up, Jizzle? What's up, Chon? How you doing, guys? You Better know. than a certain fan base. Uh-oh. You know. Uh-oh. <laughs> John, 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 how, how was rehab? Rehab was good. You know what I'm saying? I sh- you know, I'm on a little bit of a minutes restriction, but I should be back fully on the court. You know what I'm saying? I got sent down to the to the to the uh, A B C D E F G League, and um, you know, I should be ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> what you about to do? I'm about to do three, man. I'm about to do three. <laughs> All right, man. Let's go ahead and uh, pitch that on over to the cam uh, segment and see what's going on with this guy. Why don't we uh, dial him up and see what's going on? Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Straight like that, straight like that. All right, man. So last week we had the Black Announce Table join us on the podcast. And this week uh, we've got another special guest lined up for y'all. We've got Mr. Cameron Hawkins uh, from the South Congress podcast, PW Torch, and fan sided uh, DDT, the, the wrestling side of that. So, uh, welcome to the show, Cam Hawkins. Oh, man, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Hey, I, I appreciate you coming on, brother man. And in, in some ways, to be honest with you, and I, I think I've told you this before, in, in, in one way or another, we probably wouldn't have a Public Enemies podcast if it wasn't for meeting you. Yeah, so. yeah, it, it's, and it's, it's one of my favorite stories because, you know, my kind of, my whole thing with, what I do with like the pods and the radio shows and the writing was like, to me, it's about being relatable to people like us. Um, and then if I'm relatable enough to people like us, people who aren't like us take notice. Exactly. And then they start to pick up bits and pieces of what we do. And then it becomes bigger. Like, again, like you and I met randomly at a day party during South by because you had a WWE chain on. Like this is literally how we met, you yep. know, <laughs> that turns into oh, you watch wrestling, and I do this, and I do that, and I do music, and, and that everything kind of jumped off from there. So, yeah, like, as as much as I like to think that I helped you do what you do, like, you absolutely helped me do what I do, because it, it let me know that there's us out there, and there's us to talk to. So, yeah, it's it's whatever you think I may have done to help or influence, you've done the same, absolutely. Super dope, super dope. Now that the pleasantries are out of the way, sir... <laughs> I got a oh, bone yeah. to pick Look. with you, my friend. I, I, and I, I, I don't even know what it is, but I know what it is. Because <laughs> whenever I do something like this, it's the same bone every time. No, let's, okay. let's do it. <laughs> All right. So, so, so the bone is this. You're sting slander, man. <laughs> Your sting slander has to come to an end. There's, there's just, I just don't get it, man. This man is great. He is on the list. You feel me? I mean, the list. There's a list, you know what I mean, for like yeah. the best wrestlers and stuff like that. But there's a list for the elite, no pun intended. Sting is one of them, man. And you just don't really seem to, 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 to accept that. You don't really seem to agree with that. Let me, um, tell, you, let me tell you this, okay? So, because I always, it's like, it's like, it's like Button says, you start with love, right? Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you take, Take out the cruiserweight matches from WCW, right? Because I think those are, when you start to talk about athleticism, you can't really put those with a bunch of the heavyweight matches. It, it's, it's apples and oranges, right? Very if right. we're talking world title matches on Nitro, like period, um, Sting DDP is way up there for me. I think it was in 99. Fantastic yeah. match start to finish, right? Um, and and if, if not, you know, 50-50, mostly because of Sting. I thought Sting carried himself great. Um, I think that if outside of that match, if I said, hey, tell me about a great Sting match from 1996 and on, you would be lying to me about anything that you said outside of that match. You'd be a liar. I might be, I might be hard-pressed to find yeah. something that would be... <laughs> and what, and, and I'll say this, too. Like It ain't Sting's fault that he was paid to sit home for a year and get fat. Like it ain't, that's not on him. You know, it's yeah. what they wanted from the guy, right? I think that he was always a step below what they wanted him to be as a main eventer. And again, I never said this thing sucks. I said yeah. it's trash, but you know, he, trash is, you know, trash is really saying mid, you know? Right. Trash I mean, is like, definitely it's not saying bad, but he's, you know, he's, he's perfectly fine. And then I give him a lot of credit for, what he did in TNA. I'm not saying it was good, but the effort was there. And that was always my thing with the guy. Like, I felt like he was kind of trying. You know, he's super athletic, had a great look, but I never felt like he was all in on what he was doing. But, I mean, if the money stays the same, why work hard? Exactly. You know? mm. like, I'll tell you this. One of the first things that I did when I when I got the WWE Network, right, and and this is when I was paying for the WWE Network, because now I don't I don't pay for anything. I just... To stream everything illegally. Sure. And <laughs> you know, if there's a free, it's in the pay for it. Exactly. If, if there's a free option, I'm probably going to go with the free option. So the the first thing that I did 
when I got the WWE Network was I went back and I watched the entire transformation story from Surfer Sting to Crow Sting and that that whole timeline, right? And they don't have like a WWE like hidden gems or like a whatever category to where you can watch that. So literally I was like going back and like, okay, let me remember back. Like when was this segment? When did this initially start? And I'm just going to basically watch the whole thing from there. And I watched it and it just didn't feel the same way that it felt when I was a kid. (laughs) So I don't have, uh, I have a lot of fond memories of sting from, from that time. And I think going back and watching over that time period kind of, muddied that a little bit but i'm not in a position where i just want just a a large majority of the wrestling fan base finding this out and saying (laughs) you know what maybe he was mid because i'm also I'm, i'm coming to that um that same crossroads in a sense with somebody like cesaro because i'm like cesaro is really really good in ring but my opinion on cesaro is What other tools does he have? Yeah, I think that, you know, we are in a we're in an era where, you know, the manager is starting to come back, but we can point to three, four, five guys who having a manager would have, you know, masked some of the issues they have. Like Mm -hmm. you give Shelton Benjamin a manager 10 years ago and he's your world champion at some point, I think. I agree. Cesaro, I'm, I'm, if he had stayed with Heyman, I think he would have got better run. But, but absolutely, like he is, he's all go. It's not that, and he's all go, and he's show too. Like he looks the part, mm-hmm. uh, he carries himself great. But you know, in this era where, like he's not foreign enough, that's almost not fair, right? I, I see what you he mean. He doesn't have, yeah, he doesn't have that thing that Sheamus has where he looks like a cartoon. And so his quirks are masked by being a character. He doesn't have the Kyrie Oscar thing where they can go all the way left and there be like a a mystique about them that, you know, is is grounded in certain stereotypes we have as Americans, but but it works. Um, But yeah, it's unfortunate that, you know, he's a guy who can speak English, but is never going to have the cadence that he needs. So yeah, like I, I... Agree. Like he, I would he speaks like have, six different languages and they haven't yeah. found a pocket for him. And yeah. and honestly, like I feel like he's a really, really good in-ring worker, but he doesn't really look cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's there's nothing that like like you said, the, the thing with Seamus where he kind of looks like a cartoon, or there, there's that that one character trait that you could point out and say, that's what's dope about Cesaro, like outside of his in-ring work. Because I feel like he's trans he's had the 007 uh, yeah. Jason Statham look entrance type of thing. He had he had Heyman. He had uh, he had the real Americans with Zeb Coulter, and you know he had all of that. He he even had the whole tear away gimmick that you know the the thing that that Angel Garza is doing now. He had all of that. And it's just he like, even had Oxana when he first came in. Yeah, he did. Damn. Which ain't a bad thing at all. Right. Um, <laughs> but you know the, the thing about. Him, like, I think uh, if you look at a guy like Nick Aldis, I think one of the big reasons Nick Aldis doesn't have a big deal is because he was 15 years too late. You know, um, you put Cesaro in the, the the Nikolai Volkov era, and you know he's blown the doors off this thing. You know, he's yeah. he's wrestled Hulk Hogan for the title 46 times. If you put right. him, you know, there, but yeah, it's it's a he's a throwback and not in a way that's going to make him as much money as it should. Absolutely. I would pay to see Cesaro throw hundred mile hour uppercuts at Hulk Hogan's mouth right now. <laughs> yes, I'll yeah. pay good money for that. Definitely, uh, I'll pay good money for that. So, Cam, how's uh how's life been since you got Jim Cornette fired? Hey man, hey, you're oh. you're a hero. <laughs> oh man, guys, I can hero. I can tell you like um I, I got a buddy, my buddy and, Jeff. Who, and that's a joke, by the way, for everybody. Yeah. That's a, that's just a joke. You feel me? Like, yeah, but good. Yeah. <laughs> he got himself fired. Okay. Yeah, exactly. My buddy Jeff, who started a pod probably about six months ago, uh, was coming to me about, and if you guys, if you've ever been a PW Torch uh, VIP subscriber, you can hear Jeff on one of the first episodes of You, Me, and Wrestling. Um, yeah. He was telling me about early 2000s ROH, and like from there, I just kept telling him, like, Jeff, you need to do a pod. Jeff, you need to do a pod. And so then he invites me on, and I said, okay, Jeff, 
we're going to talk for an hour about all the different things you're going to face if this thing works. Like mm-hmm. these, all the problems you're going to run into. And one of the things we talked about was like, yo, you're going to do some things that you know are right. Like, you know, hundred percent are right. And the people closest to you are going to tell you that you're right. And like-minded and decent people are going to congratulate you. And then there are going to be a bunch of people you have nothing in common with outside of wrestling that are going to call you every name in the book when you bring attention to some real shit. Right. Yeah. Man, I, I did that. Uh, you know, I, I retweeted that video of Jim Cornette telling the joke, and then I wrote that article. Boy, they were calling me all kind of race baiters and cunts and twats, and yo, it was wild, man. And like, Sheesh. I can't fight them, you know, because yeah. it's actually in the fan side of rules that you can't threaten niggas. So I was like, oh god, I, I just gotta eat this because, <laughs> like, it's not it's not something to celebrate, but like, I'm you know, mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a regular guy. Who, but a regular guy who grew up in Texas. So you always, you play your sports and everything's real competitive and you got to run your track and you got to lift your weights and you you just come from that, you know? And mm-hmm. so, you know, you might be like the nigga in a country western bar where the white dude looks at you funny and you got to stand up for something. So a wrestling show, I'm not scared of nobody at no wrestling show. I oh, like look on niggas at WrestleMania, you know what I mean? Like, and, and it's been a thing, you know? Sometimes you got to you gotta set somebody straight. And it's not me being and a tough guy, that's just me being a nigga in a world where a bunch of niggas don't exist. So right. I had to really eat like things that pe- people were saying to me, but because they don't come from a world where you can call somebody out their name and it not be a thing. Exactly. You know? And so real adjustment. Um, but you know, the real thing with Jim Cornette was just like, and, and this is kind of my platform that I've always pushed. And, and the reason I love you guys so much is your consistency. Like, mm. you're, and okay, so I'm. 34. How old are, are the oldest one of you guys? I'm the oldest. I am 31. I'll be 32 this May. Here's the difference between 34 and 31. Like, we all kind of came to social media at the same time, but you guys are just enough younger t- to where, like, you're not just on it. It's a reflex to use it and to create on it and to post on it. And and for me, like, I'm the young guy in my crew. Like, I'm 34, but everybody else is, like, touching 40. And so, like, like, we don't post the graphics all the time like you guys do, like we should. And we don't post the stories or the videos all the time like you guys should. And so, like, I really appreciate that about how you guys attack it. Like, it it really is admirable, right? So, what, what I'm getting used to, or what I'm trying to get around to is... When I see stuff like the Jim Cornette thing about him making jokes that you would not make in a room full of niggas, right? <laughs> it just goes to show that we need more of you guys. We need more of me. And especially in wrestling management, like they need black people and women behind the scenes so that we don't deal with this kind of crazy easy stuff mm-hmm. like some so of these things have, can be filtered through a lot better you know it's just it's really as simple as if you run that same pitch through a woman or a person of color or especially a woman of color it's not gonna make air because they're going to talk you out of doing that like y'all remember abraham washington right he was like, <laughs> yeah um, some, somebody just washington told us to reach out to him to get him on the show <laughs> he made a joke today and the joke on, on Twitter was, uh, how she's like, how funny would it be if Nyla Rose had a wardrobe malfunction and her balls fell out? <laughs> and I'm like, and the thing is, like, I, I'm not saying in a certain space that's not a funny thing. What I'm saying is, your audience, like, you got to know your audience. You got to know that, that, that you have trans people in your audience. You got to know, and, and especially, like, regardless of how, we may feel, and I'm just saying that because you guys haven't had this conversation. Like, mm-hmm. we're gonna have, you know, people, trans people of color who want to get into wrestling. So why alienate them from the jump? Like, even if you think it's funny, that's why you run that through people who might have to deal with that, and they gonna tell you if it's funny or not. And right. if you never ask, you'll never know. And, and yeah, we just we really need especially people with the drive of guys like you who are going to be on it and on it and on it and creating and posting, you know, on that side. And then on management, just somebody who will be like, yo, this shit is so fucking stupid. You are fucking our money up. Like, this is something that only you guys kind of know. I have a little bit of insider information. So nobody else has heard this anyway, right? Right. 
after season during season one of NWA Power, who were they in negotiations with to get their show streamed on their network? I believe it was the WWE Network. WWE Network. Yeah. And so you fumbled a bag in post production, not even on a live show. You fumbled a <laughs> bag. And, yeah. and, and my biggest thing is, and again, the joke is like, Cam, you did it. And some people really feel that way. But if it wasn't me, it would have been the next man. Like, right. I don't. Or it like, should have been I, someone. Yeah. Exactly. So, so yeah, man, it's, it's the whole thing's crazy. And all this stuff is just so easy to avoid if you just bring some people who don't look like you in the room when you're talking about stuff. It's that simple. And we can see uh, from from the time from when that happened to now that uh, the Pope probably wasn't one of those people that were in the room or in the know or you feel me in the, in that with the movers and shakers that as far as decision making goes. It's so, because uh, with him, man, like we um we follow each other on social social media and we've had talks like before that happened but what jumped out to me was when i posted that thing about man i don't think i'm watching the show no, no more he jumped out the window like he's like oh so because of one thing happens and you don't like the joke you're not gonna watch it no more and i was trying to figure out why he of all people was coming at me with that you know what i mean yeah come to find out he was negotiating a deal and was about to be on so i'm like okay hey i respect the hustle like, I, yeah. I get it you know what right. i mean like, try to protect yours it's, it makes sense but it's like like, I'm not saying I wouldn't have said it if he had reached out or I would have retracted it, but it's like, yeah, I, I do also think that if he's in the room when that happens, they at least ask him about it. And so right. and they don't ask him about it and they realize like, yo, I don't know if we can say this with him in the room. You just really need checks and balances. And so, and that's my man. Like, I always thought that uh, he got a raw deal in WWE. I think I if you go look at the rematch after that WrestleMania match that they had on ECW TV, which was basically the longer version of that match. I thought that was really good. And I, I thought he was going to make it in TNA, but you know, stuff don't work out sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes Elijah, <laughs> Elijah, <laughs> right? <laughs> you call a man by his government name. <laughs> New so, breed. Right. New breed Elijah, yeah. you know what I'm so in addition to that, um, there was also, uh, what came up last week after the rumble, uh, the whole conversation about the 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 racism in the rumble, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm just dubbing it the racist rumble just for shits and giggles, right? <laughs> and I know that that whole thing with Bruce Pritchard had came out of you know the the house or the umbrella which you sit under. Yeah, so, yeah. or Bruce what? Mitchell, Bruce Mitchell, yeah, Bruce, yeah, yeah. Excuse me, Bruce Mitchell, yeah. Excuse me. So what was what was your reaction and your thought behind that entire conversation that was that was being had? Because I do think that there's some credence to his argument. Yeah, I think that, you know, when when Travis and Rich and myself, um, you know, the uh, the three guys from the East Coast cast, when we like we have a group chat um, and we basically we talk in there every day about just just everything that's going on. Right. I think that. That we all kind of came to the conclusion, which I think you know most people like us did, in that it wasn't overtly racist. However, you booked yourself into the racism. You know, um, yeah. if you constantly define down your characters of color, um, and then somebody has the counterpoint to say, no, it's not that they were; it was racist. It's that these guys were mid cards, and it's like, whoa, like that's that's the thing. That's what we're talking about is the issue, like there's no way you can look at what happened at WrestleMania and uh, WrestleMania last year at WrestleMania last year. There's no way you can look at what they did with Kofi Kingston and then look at his run up until Brock and see how strongly he was booked and how he was beating everybody clean. You can't look at that and then look at the Brock match and then look at the rumble and say, Oh, that's just what it is. Like you, you chose to start a storyline with a guy and imply, that the reason he didn't get his shot was the color of his skin. And mm-hmm. then you let this guy, Brock, who has never had any type of 50-50 encounter with, you know, a, a black wrestler. I don't even think a wrestler of color. Uh, Roman Reigns is the exception, so I don't want to disrespect him like that. But um, for the most part, like, that's just not what he's booked to do. And, you know, th- then you get to the rumble. Like, I, I understand Bruce's issue because you, then you got to understand about him is 
before Travis and Dre and Rich and myself came along, mm -hmm. it was Bruce, you know, that fighting a good fight. Yeah. A exactly. And all due respect to Wade, like I, if you've ever heard me on with Wade, I have. Wade is very receptive to the things that I feel, the things that I think, um, even if his point is different. I thought he was great with this with Bruce. Bruce. And he even told Bruce, he's like, Bruce, I don't think this is racism. However, I will admit that X, Y, and Z created A, B, and C on the front end. So, you know, there is that there. But but Bruce was basically out here yelling at the top of his lungs to himself because his space naturally is a bunch of old conservative white guys, you know, yeah. and he grew up in the South where he is the combat racism. And also he, you know, has, has a thing for the chocolate too. So he's had <laughs> to see things from a wider perspective. Perspective, you know, um, so no, I always appreciate him for voicing his opinions, even though I think sometimes he can jump off that deep end. If he didn't do it, nothing would get done. So I, I agree with um, the crux of what he was saying, not necessarily um, every single bullet point, though. I, I feel you. I feel you. And Tron, you weren't here mm -hmm. last week when we had that conversation with the Black and Outstate. Would you have anything you want to add? Any thoughts to that conversation? <sighs> I mean, <clears throat> it is or to what this it is. conversation, rather. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I mean, it really speaks for itself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got you. I got you. <laughs> okay, so and then, it, and then it felt like there was just like, "Hey, yo, Kofi, at least you're gonna get a move in this time, <laughs> right?" And so, like, and so, so flip it real quick, though. Like, I understand that you know, long, short-term booking, you let Ricochet get the uh get the uh the super showdown match yeah, with well, yeah, you, you let him get the low blow to lead to drew eliminating to yeah. play off what brock did to him to get the super showdown right mm -hmm. cool cool man there's a way that he can hit that and then kofi can hit the uh like kofi trouble can hit in paradise or something and then drew can eliminate him and then drew throw kofi over too that's fine but it was just it's right there for you to at least like get a modicum of payback for this guy who was clearly done wrong and wasn't allowed to address the problem. That yeah. that's just how you book a baby face. But you know, um Kofi is um, you know, Kofi and Xavier and Big E, three of my favorite people to watch be successful. Um, because I yeah. think, you know, they, they they represent well and they they cover, you know, more than just one type of us. And so it's cool, but man, you know, I was there live and I was like, I literally screamed right then. And you probably can't hear it on, on the feed, but I said, I hate racism. Loud. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. We need that. We definitely need that. <laughs> okay, that's funny. All right, next next bullet point that I have here. I gotta ask you. Um, hmm. How do I how do I pose this question? All right, fuck it. Here it goes. Just roll it out. Are you, sir, subscribed to any of the uh, women wrestlers who have uh, Patreon accounts? No, no. <laughs> um, only because I'm only because I'm cheap, man. Um, okay, yeah, fun too. story, right? <laughs> fun story, and and because I, I don't have to say names, but let me tell you how all this stuff kind of works even even the women who aren't in wrestling but are wrestling adjacent it's all smoke and mirrors buddy so uh you know being around for long enough follower count starts to go up you start to move in different circles so i mean there's like a there's a corner of wrestling twitter that is attractive women right um sure. and you know we, we like to call to them we like to call them healthy Hell yeah, <laughs> those <Healthy> ones. <laughs> Indeed. So, um, you know, you get you get cool with these girls, and uh, you know, a couple of them for, are from Texas, so they know girls in California, so they know girls in Florida, this and that. I get this one to start talking to me, right? She DMing me, you know, she real cool as girl from Florida. She got her OnlyFans, right? So I'm, I'm cheap, man. I can't bring myself to have that on my credit card. So it's, it's right. cheap and conscious, right? So then next thing you know, I start to get this. start to get the, you know, the OnlyFans for free, if you know what I, I mean, okay. right? Right, okay. She's like, okay. Um, she's like, yo, I'm going to be I'm gonna be in Houston for the Rumble, this and that. I'm like, man, okay, cool. So, you know, I got my hotel set up. I'm like, all right, I know what time it is. Because, I mean, she's yeah. going to talk. I'm like, all right, let's go. Man. I get down there. Um, I'm at the World's Collide show. She's there too. 
Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what this girl does, but like her actual job, I'm going to say this. She don't got second row money, right? <laughs> she in the second row. So I'm like, damn, I guess that OnlyFans popping. So all of a sudden, that hit me up all the time. It goes to like, you know, she not really hit me up in Houston. So I'm like, all right, not going to press at all. Man, we go out that night, me and my boys, I see her on the block. So you know, I just tap her on the arm. I'm talking to her. Man, I swear she was with both of her sponsors, man. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> and then I, yo, and it was kind of like, like the conversation was different. The energy was different, but I ain't press, you know, because right. that's not me. Like, hey, hey, you got to live your life. So I'm not going to act up nothing, nothing to question you about it. Hour later, get that text, man. I really wanted to hang out with you. Maybe we could do something tomorrow. I was like, all right, man, we're going to see. We're going to see. No, we did not see. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> I see that she was on the floor in the aisle at the rumble. I said, all right, man, I see what the game is. So, so yeah, um, that's as close as I'm going to get to anybody's subscription account in wrestling because I don't <laughs> live them lies, man. I, I wonder. Man. Right. I can't do it. Right, you got real life subscriptions, and then there's a possibility that hey, that you, you you're still you still have that platinum subscription. Yeah, you know, you know, every every now and again. I got no questions. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, oh, hell, yeah. I just different. always look and I'm like, yo, I'm like, hey, more power to you. Um, I'm I'm not gonna argue against it. I do wonder if there's anything that they're offering other than just like calendars and and little eight by tens and stuff like that you know what i mean but yeah nobody i feel like nobody with a deal is gonna go too far like i anybody who has like a sub to jordan grace's patron like i respect it i get it i know exactly what's going on yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah for sure i i would i throw somebody 750 you know to hold it for a month um you know? but yeah i think that they, they keep it tasteful now I, what i do wonder is if um one of the reasons that she resigned I wonder if she's like really eating off that because mm -hmm. like, I don't think AEW is going to let you do that. I don't think WWE is going to let you do that. A and with how they pick talent, um, you know, them really starting to appreciate different looks, especially like we're well past the divas era. You know what I mean? So Definitely. you can have like a Statlander and a Rio on the same roster and then like on the other side you can have Nia Jax and Bailey and Sasha and Mandy Rose on the same roster so you know I wonder if she sat down looked at what a performance center was offering her and then looked at what she's getting an impact plus they let her go wrestle wherever plus she gets to keep that you know OnlyFans money yeah, I get it or, Patreon or whatever she plays it like I, I understand extra stream of revenue there's no arguing against that like, really quick that's to not to throw off your sketch. Did you see uh, Triple H and Sarah J were both at Mojo Rowley's uh, Super Bowl party? No, I did not. Wow. There. That's yeah. that's crazy. I knew I knew Hove was there. Yeah. I, knew, I knew Triple H was there, but I did not notice Sarah J was there. That's interesting. Yeah. You, know, you never seen them two in the same place at the same time, so there's uh, always yeah. that, that confusion they, of, you know. If they bump into each other, they're gonna disappear like old boy and time cop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shut up, time cop! <laughs> so that's wild. <laughs> and that's Belichick crazy. was there. And Belichick and was Belichick. there. Yeah, and definitely. Belichick was there. Sarah J was there. All right, big baller <laughs> Belichick looking to spin that check, man. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> he wanted to see what was really popping. You know, hey, you know Brady gone now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad. So I have this game that I want to play with you. And this will this will probably wrap it up for, for what we have here in this segment. Um, but I was watching Drink Champs uh, a few days ago. And, uh, Nori had Lil Wayne on the show. And he did this whole rapid fire thing with him. So I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, every now and again when we have guests on the show, I'm going to play this game with them. I'm going to call it This or That. Uh, because I don't know otherwise what it's called. But um, I do have a couple questions for you. Rapid fire. Um, are you ready, sir? Let's do it. All right, Tron, you're going to have to help me out in post-production here. But this is the new segment, This or That. Like this, that, and this, and uh, it's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh, it's like All right. I, and I, you know what? Here it is. I think I have um, an idea of what some of these are, but we're going to run through them. All right. Here we go. Texas or the uh, Texans or the Redskins? Washington. 
Gotcha. Uh, HBK or Hitman? Brett. <laughs> Wrong answer. We're going to go ahead and end the call here. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and end it here. You didn't uh, ask who was better. You asked. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. <laughs> this is bullshit. All right. <laughs> Uh, Splash Brothers or LeBrow? Splash Brothers. Kobe uh, at number eight or Kobe is number 24? 24. Rolling. Antonio Brown or Orlando Brown? <laughs> Bobby Brown. <laughs> Good <I'm rolling. laughs> uh, white women or Latinas? Latinas. Definitely. <laughs> Hogan, it was really fast, wasn't it? Sorry, definitely. Guys. You answered the way too quickly, so I know what I, I know what time it is. Uh, Hogan or Blanchard? Ooh, Blanchard. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Attitude error or ruthless aggression? Ruthless aggression. Ja Morant or Ja Rule? Ja Morant. Usos of the Young Bucks. Usos. Okay, okay. Well, I knew that. <laughs> we, we know what type of time it is. Here's yeah. one. 50-50 twin or the Bella twins? Oh, my goodness. Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, wow. Uh, 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 damn. Um, damn. Um, yeah. Stumped him with that one, didn't I? Oh man! man. Um, now one of them sold George Bush and crack and swung through the stoplight. Fifty-fifty twin. Definitely got to go with that. <laughs> AEW or New Japan? Ah, uh, New Japan. Adam Cole or Adam Page? Adam Cole. We don't do Heyman right here either, dog. <laughs> he, I mean, he's cool. They, it's not. They dropped the ball with him early. He was touted as like the next guy in wrestling. And when he showed up, they they didn't go right for it. I think it did him a disservice. He's fine now, but I, I do like that buckshot lariat though. I think that looks good. Um I'm I'm done with random drunks in wrestling though. I don't you know like I mean? that. Like, that's I, that's what I don't like about like I really had high hopes for Hangman and AEW, and I think that they are they are kind of turning a corner with him and his booking, but the whole drunk thing on air as a character trait it's just bothersome and um it, it you know the, the callbacks to the whole scott hall and wcw thing and all of that and that's 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 really like the the uh what 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 i have in my mind when i see them acting that out on camera and shit i'm like now nah, there's real people that are going through that in real life and you're making light of it for a wrestling storyline yeah which i mean and, and, and they don't go. It's not egregious. I'm no. just like, it's it's so default cowboy. You know what I mean? Like this is what cowboys do. It's like, yeah. ah, come on, man, y'all can do better than this. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> like this, there, there's got to be something there. Something there. All right. Well, shit. That wraps up what I got for you, brother man. Uh, once again, I do want to appreciate. Uh, say uh, uh, again a thank you for for coming on the show. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, you know, sometime uh, in the near future, we could we can do this again. Absolutely, man. And and you know, my biggest thing, like everybody wants to do a podcast. Everybody has a podcast. Everybody has a feed somewhere. Um, everybody wants to be social media guru and Maven. Um, you guys really do a great job of content, content, content. It looks good and it is good. So it's not just throwing it up to throw it up. Um, more people should look to you guys about how to do this thing the right way. Genuinely. I appreciate that. You know what's crazy about that? Like we we started off doing the whole thing and um like basically the the IG feed and all this was basically kind of like an like an art gallery, but like at a at a at a point now we're kind of getting to where we're putting a lot more like original stuff, like doing like the power rankings and stuff like that with some of the fans and stuff and the people that are listening to the show and paying attention, being able to put their votes in and things like that. So there's like a lot more original content that we've been able to kind of pump out. And the reception has been um, a lot better than, than what I thought it was going to be initially. So there's some things going on. And then um, I'm just I'm just glad that we are able to get to this point at least no, you know almost at 100 episodes guys, yeah almost at 100 episodes this guys. is uh 
Definitely, I do appreciate that. All right, man, that that does it for me. Anything you guys want to want to want to want to say to Cam before we go ahead and move the fuck on to the next segment that we have here for the show? I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I like this guy. <laughs> man, no, no, it's um, that that's that's the thing. Um, and and granted, like you guys are at least right now insulated with the three of you creating good stuff but because it's good like you're gonna see you're gonna get those calls from from x y and z guy x y and z lady who wants you on and then it just it just goes from there man being you and just talking to you three guys being you just counts for so much especially with us um knowing that you know we are a segment of the fan base we have good opinions on all this stuff and so just um you know be yourself um and, and all this stuff for all of us is just gonna keep going man uh talk and write and create and, and and eventually when we turn around it's just gonna be us and it's not gonna be a bad thing exactly straight up man cam hawkins everybody man let's 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 uh let's give this man a round of applause and uh once again brother i thank you for coming on the show man you have a good one brother. hey hey right. cam we, oh, wait. we don't do yeah, we don't do uh, Sting over here either, dog. I told him that the, the sharpshooter is better than the Scorpion Deathlock, and uh, and then he grew a he grew a goatee when he was a um, Wolfpack Sting, and I didn't like it. We not trust him anymore. Quick, me being like 12, 13 year old me, I was like, yeah, Sting's in the cool group, Sting's in the Wolfpack, and then like you know, thirty four year old me, I was dogging Lex Luger today for wearing Fubu, so you know, um. <laughs> I said you saw it before I saw it, but now that we both see it, we're both we're both better off for it. Absolutely. <laughs> man, hey man, this is just gonna be me and Tron on the show from now on, bro. <laughs> hey man. Hey, Jizzle, hey, CJ, you might want to see if there's a, a spot open on the East Coast cast or something like that, brother. Because, uh, hey, man. I don't know, man. You know I don't know how to do this, man. I just show up and, and talk, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Don't do me like that. No. <laughs> Big action, man. On, man. Once, once again, man, on, on the closeout, Cam, we appreciate you and good luck to you, of course, in your future and all of your endeavors and everything that you decide to do in the future, man, because you do a lot of dope shit and I, I, I love it, man. You keep it real. You do all of your shit pretty, pretty, for the, pretty fucking dope. You do it for the culture, no pun intended. And so we appreciate you, man. Absolutely. Love. Take care, man. All right, man. Take care, man. Till next time. Peace. All right. How was that, guys? Black man. How the fuck was that, man? How yeah. the fuck was that, man? See, see how Graham was trying to get me up off here, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, look, bro. <laughs> you got to pick a side, man. No, I just, I can't like, I got to like all versions of Sting, man. Come on, man. That's the, the Sting with the, first off, the Sting with the, with the goatee was creepy. All right. Sting with the goatee was kind of trash. And he was okay, fighting Bret Hart at the time, and that I was that was the that was the mid grade sting with the with the red face paint. No, he's the greenhouse. That's the greenhouse thing. That's yeah. That thing was tripping, man. That that wasn't that wasn't the way. And then you can't be finding the goat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you find the goat, man, I just gotta hate you forever after that. Then he stopped finding the goat. I was like, all right, man. Him and the goat shook hands. That's hella funny. Shout out to Cam once again for stopping by. If you want to hit him up, hit him up at C Hawk on Twitter at C E E. Hawk, H-A-W-K. That's that man, Cam Hawkins, right there. Hey, man. Enjoy them gyms. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm talking about, yeah, I'm talking about. Where should we go next, guys? You guys want to get into some quick hits? I got a little, uh, couple little, couple little things that we could run through real quick. Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Quick hits. I'm hit. talking about. I got, I got a little list. All right. Uh -oh. So, officially, we got Killer Cross signing to WWE. We also Bam! got... <laughs> we also got Timothy Thatcher. Yeah, I've seen that. Longtime friend and stable mate of Walter. Me, of, of Walter. Of Walter. You feel me? And Marcel Barthel through the uh through the um uh Imperium before they came to NXT. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is it, how would you like Thatcher, to be a Walter? Thatcher, Thatcher McThaddeus. <laughs> and then uh Aja Pereira or Aja Smith also signed to WWE and she is going to be, it looks like, referee. That's pretty dope. Congratulations to everybody. That's, yeah. That's, that's raw. Blexerance and the referee. Exactly. There you go. First African American uh, referee. There we go. In NXT. And so we're going to run like that, straight like that. Um, 
In addition to that, new hirings, WWE also has some firings. Yeah. And some money losing games. So they fired their uh, co-presidents. What is it? George Berrios and Michelle Wilson, I believe, is her name. Um, both of them are gone. Now, I'm assuming there's going to be an official statement or some some explanation in regards to where they're going to go next with this position um, tomorrow. Well, today, rather, by the time this comes out, because um, the quarterly results for the fourth quarter are due. So there will be a press conference uh, where I'm pretty sure Vince McMahon is going to touch on this. Hey, Dad, uh, I'm just a wrestler. I don't know numbers. Stock price has been like a little fluctuating, I guess, a little bit here and there just because of that. Did them niggas lose like a billion dollars? I don't know, man. They're talking about he's supposed to be losing like $375 million or something like that with this XFL thing. No, the XFL going to start, nigga, on Saturday. Everything going to be okay. Are you going to watch the XFL? I have no choice. Tron, are you going to watch the XFL? Let's go, LA Wildcats, baby. <laughs> they got to change the name to the Mambas now. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> looks like AEW's got toys. AEW, AEW action figures, action figures. Are they trash? AEW action figures. I have no idea what they look like. I don't know if they're trash. It looks like uh, one of the guys who used to uh, do the Jax um, action figure line with WWE is actually working with them on this. Uh, the toys will be unveiled on February the twenty second of this year at the New York Toy Fair. Um, uh, all the talent. Oh, oh uh, so they was, just so they just think so they just think they can just come up and get in WWE way with the toys. That is WWE shit. Niggas gonna have toys, bud. Niggas gonna have toys, man. <laughs> they, they need a roster first. <laughs> they scan the talent on uh, All Out Weekend. That, remember, remember when there was that? Uh, I think it was All Out Weekend. Excuse me. It was that picture of like MJF, like some little production truck or whatever and it looked like his face was like purple or some shit like that and people were wondering like what it was if it was a, a video game or something like that um there was a picture that was, that was that was floating around but that was actually for um the toys that they were that they were scanned for so uh february 22nd um i believe that is the same week of the week before aew revolution so um, man, man fuck all that man bianca belair got a toy there you go. This yeah. this moment in Black history. Y'all talking about Bianca for sure got a toy, and yeah, it's it, dope. It, it, it's super raw. Yeah, it looks dope. It looks good. Um, Kabuki Warriors, longest reigning uh, women's tag team champions. Congratulations! Round of applause for the Kabuki Warriors, or for the Kabuki Warriors rather. That's dope. They deserve it. Uh, where are the the iconics though? Where are the high iconics? Where are our uh, female counterpart namesake? Where are you? Where are you? Come yell at them. Yeah, do that. Hey, uh, Kayla! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kyrie! Did you <laughs> journalism for that? <laughs> hey, Oscar! <laughs> hey, fucking great. <laughs> Come back soon, please. Injuries, injuries. Kalisto has a separated shoulder. Uh, looks like there's no return date at this time, but Kalisto, uh, get well soon. Y'all talking about yeah, put it back together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. AJ Styles also uh, has a separated shoulder. It looks like he, uh, the uh, WWE, I believe, released a statement and said that um, he is improving uh, well ahead of the official <clears throat> uh, rehab time that the, the doctors had quoted or had thought. Um, he says that he does not expect to miss WrestleMania. It's a triple threat. <laughs> Page, page, page. Separate my shoulder, page. Put me in, put me in the match, page. Page, page. Pop it back in place, page. <laughs> I work backstage now, AJ. <laughs> Goldberg's gonna be on SmackDown Friday. <laughs> Why? Um, because somebody's next. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. You, you Somebody's just coming, next. You think he's just coming just to kick it? Yeah, dude, who's gonna be next in Saudi Arabia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he's coming back for, for sure. Yeah, he's coming back for that bag. It's gonna be Braun, Goldberg, and Braun for the IC title. Ooh, 
ooh, that'll boost the status of the IC title. Since you guys complain so much, what if Goldberg wants to compete for the Intercontinental Championship? Hmm? Hmm? He's gonna, he's gonna hmm? beat up Sami Zayn, yeah, Shinsuke, no and Cesaro. Yeah, All them niggas that's is getting That's probably dogs. exactly what's gonna happen. It's gonna be a, a thirty-seven second match. So. <laughs> Me versus all three, you guys. <laughs> All three you got uh, it. It's, it's gonna be like uh when when uh, uh The Rock uh fought Eric Rowan at that that WrestleMania and it was like basically he went against the whole wide family and Eric Rowan now has a as a WrestleMania match against The Rock. <laughs> he was like, Oh, we're gonna have a match right now. Okay. It's gonna be like reminiscent of uh uh Goldberg and Bill DeMott because he was the first victim. <laughs> hey, Bill. Yeah, hey Bill, hey Bill. Let's run this back. I'm gonna run this. Hey Bill, how's it feel to lose? How's it feel to be you know the the one? <laughs> you were the pebble that started the snowball that started the avalanche. <laughs> it's not the snowball that started the avalanche. Um, oh yeah, and you're bullying. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't do that. Stop doing that. It's not cool. Um, NXT AEW. Let's talk AEW. Oh man. AEW AEW AEW. Look, man. Can, Some can nigga I, lost can, his eye. <laughs> <laughs> Some nigga lost his eye. Look, check this out. <sighs> Britt Breaker is trash. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. That's, that's how you want to do it? Get this brought off my goddamn TV. All right? I don't want to hear another motherfucking word about no mandible claw. Look, man. She just makes the shit look weird. Like... How, what, how you do a rings? Look, I know she's been doing it for a minute, but the, I, for some reason, when I saw it tonight against Yuka Sakazaki, <laughs> okay, and don't they be ran, disrespectful. Hold yeah. on, wait. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> I'm back. Look, check it out. The the rings of Saturn mandible claw. All right, get rid of it. It's over with. It's trash. Done for. All right. Um. Double or nothing is coming back. Yeah, May tw- uh, what 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 did it say? May twenty fourth. Saturday, Saturday May twenty third. Saturday May twenty third. Back okay. in Las Vegas. Back in Las Vegas, MGM Grand. Tickets going to sell uh, next week, Valentine's Day. Uh, yeah, so yeah, y'all make sure y'all make y'all dates. Uh, but look, man. Oh, man, you hate him so much. You do a promo for him. Nobody cares about Double or Nothing right now. You know what people care about is the mega, care? the mega WWE main event match that they're putting on at Revolution. <laughs> okay, John Moxley, Chris Jericho. I said it before a few weeks ago. Jericho does not have it anymore. He's trash. Mm. He's great ready? on the. He's great on the mic. You he didn't is. like him here tonight either. I did not like him here tonight. I didn't. I do. I don't. I don't. They, they listen. He's the champ. I get it. He's the he's the top of the mountain. He's the king of AEW. The the very first, the longest reigning. I get that. Deserving. The but champion. The yeah, champion. Le champion. There we go. But look, I think it's time to move on, and I hope they do move on. But I'm kind of conflicted because I don't want them to move on to Moxley. Because guess what? Moxley was at the top of the top of the the top, the biggest, the toppest you can go. He was WWE champion, and he didn't deliver even then. And I get it. People are going to argue, well, they booked him wrong. They booked him wrong. They made him look weak. They made him look like... Look, man. They did, but... (laughs) They did. They definitely did. (laughs) But I I, I see where you're coming from. They did, but look, check this out. They did. But check this out. He's still still him. Remember Ellsworth? You remember that? Remember the, the, remember the remember the popcorn thing? Remember he came out with the, the whole the whole the whole thing with the, the popcorn and the hot dogs and the ketchup and the mustard and remember that? Remember he dragged like the wagon down to the ring with all of yeah, the Yeah, that was remember, the, remember the ALS challenge? But you know what it's not it's and listen, Moxley came in that thing looking like a psycho lunatic, making himself look crazy. So he I mean and what? Do do some wacky crazy shit. That's you know Vince like that shit. Well, he didn't, stab, he didn't end up stabbing nigga eye out, now did he? <laughs> Look, oh, man, shit. they did the he, uh, Moxley poked. Who who was it? Was it uh, Ortiz? No, Santana. Santana. I can't. I can't tell which one. Santana Ortiz. Whoa, one has a big puffy fro. 
Look, man. That's a, that's a, and then they have Ortiz and Santana on their jerseys. Look, man. The bottom line is Santana and Ortiz. When are they going to get a chance? They already had a chance, didn't they? Yeah, but so was every damn tag team in AEW. I feel like there's got a chance at the damn titles. I feel like I'm seeing the same matches every week, y'all. SCU, best friends. We've seen this before. We've seen it before everywhere. <laughs> Orange Cassidy gets in the ring, puts his hands in his pocket, and he's dope. Well, that was on that was on dark, right? What happened on Dynamite? I didn't see it. He was he was he was there. SCU fought. Um, didn't they fight next? Yeah. SCU fought best well, friends. That's why he's saying that he he tired of seeing these same same tag matches and stuff. He went straight, he's tag went, tag he's went straight, straight to Britt Baker kicking the tooth out of Yuka Sakazaki. <laughs> well, she got, lost the tooth. Did she really lose the tooth though, or was it gum? I couldn't tell if it was for real. You know, like they, the optics they do that. Was it gum? They got like blood gum? No, nah, I, I don't know. I, like I said, I didn't see it. I'm asking. <laughs> Your mouth is bleeding. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, shit. Fuck it. Um, she bit the rope and kicked her in the back. <laughs> Hangman Adam Page cost the Bucks and Omega uh, the match against uh, Pentagon Phoenix, the Butcher, the Blade with the Bunny, you know, eight man tag. Typical tag. Team AEW shenanigans. Um, what do you guys think about the fact that they've got this whole thing with Paige and Kenny going on as tag team champs, and 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 the fact that they got also Kenny and Pac Pac uh, going on on the side? I think it's dope when uh, characters or wrestlers are involved in more than one storyline. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think that expands, you know, the the uh, the range of their character and the fact that if you're trying to get to the top, you know, you're you you've got an issue with basically everybody in your path, not just the one person that they're they're booking you to have a feud with to be, you know, the next person in line or to be considered good enough to have a number one contenders match. Like you should have a problem with everybody, and then with with Pac, his whole thing is, yo, I want my rubber match. Y'all, y'all think that this 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 pretty boy nigga is better than me. Uh, y'all keep giving him opportunity to shine, and I'm just over here <laughs> kicking ass and taking names. Mm -hmm. And you feel me? Like he has not beat Darby Allen, right? And I need to prove to myself that I can beat this nigga the way I know I can beat this nigga. So book me another match, Cody. That's my opinion. Hmm. He's like, fuck him, Kenny Omega, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like these supposed to be my nigga. You know what I'm saying these niggas are working out. We all niggas. You know what I'm saying niggas fight, but you know Pop, I'm, I'm worried about you now. You know what I'm saying you 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 you, you stop 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 attacking Michael. Right. <laughs> Tired of this shit. Sick of this shit, homie. Had enough of this shit, cuz my brother, homie. So forget Pac, that, Yo, Pac teased that he was gonna put the pause on Riho, and uh, that pretty much got Kenny to agree to the match. That Pac has been wanting oh so badly. <clears throat> and then Pac is like, I hope you didn't think I'd put my hands on a woman, Kenny. I'm not a <laughs> but she is. <laughs> <laughs> and Nyla Rose just power bombs Riho. Why the fuck was Riho? It's not like Riho had hand her hands tied behind her back or something. Like, why the fuck was she standing there in the first place? Since y'all say I don't show up. Here I am. Here I am. In the flesh. Nyla Rose attacked her from behind. She gave her a power bomb through the table and then looked in the camera and said, What did she say? She said, I'm coming for you. There's some some shit. I don't know what the fuck. Why you know that to the camera? Like she you already power bomb who you're coming for. Like she's right there. <laughs> you just tell her. <laughs> Which it didn't look like a live backstage segment at all. Intensity, man. It definitely looked ta taped, pre-taped, but you know it is what it is. Uh, super bad, Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. Look now, Penelope and Joey Janela really was a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this is good. I like this. This is sort of like Edge Matt Hardy ish. 
Um, um, so but I feel bad like for Joey Janela. Yeah, nobody. You said what? You feel nobody feels Janella. bad for Joey. Nobody Janella. feels that exactly. That's what I was just getting ready to say. We need something to happen or something to come out to make people be like, "Oh man, we want Joey Janela to kick this guy's ass now." Because right now it just looks like she left the ugly nigga for a, a much better looking ugly nigga. Like he wears shades. <laughs> Like real shades. Isn't the crux of their feud right now is that when she was with me, she sucked dick better. (laughs) She does it real good now, bro. Uh, No, no, no. When she was sucking my cock, bro. It sucked. (laughs) She was on like 11 out of a 10, like a 1 to 10 scale. She was like an 11 when she was sucking my cock. Now when she's sucking your cock, I'm pretty sure she's like a 4. Like a four out of ten, like Bret Hart says, bro. <laughs> Good. Come on, man. We know she ain't got no top lips, so you know it can't be that far. Yeah, that's for all you niggas that picked a hit man over HBK. You out of your fucking minds. <laughs> yeah. All right, go ahead, Tron. I'm sorry. Man, was, that, man. was that it? I'm sorry. I did. Oh, oh, Cody's ten yeah. lashings, right? Cody's ten lashes, yes. This was, uh, was I think. It comfortable? It was. Yeah. I, th- I just think it was overbooked. It was overplayed. Like, this nigga having Warlo, 50... This nigga Warlow got one. <laughs> having 50 people come down to the ring to go, Cody! I mean, it's like, come on, man. This nigga That's... Warlow almost knocked that nigga neck off. It's not like a Walter child. <laughs> <laughs> I, seen somebody, I seen somebody tweet... They booked this man Cody to take ten lashings on national TV on TNT in Black My History, History Month. Month. Yeah, and I said, "Oh, that's interesting." I didn't really think of it like that. I mean, but I haven't seen it. Um, I'm interested in watching it though. I'm see what's TNT going on says, but Turner, nigga Turner. Hey man, he's the king of the south, but I'd still like to see a white man get whipped ten times. <laughs> Somewhere Dr. Ah. Lamar Johnson was like <laughs> Right, right It Tar- starts the Tariq Nasheed was like Yeah, that's what y'all get for putting that gay in my sandwich Yeah, it starts <laughs> <laughs> Or vice versa Yeah That nigga was tripping this is, probably the, this is probably <laughs> the only thing That I like Going on in AEW right now Is Cody and Because this whole story, right As weird as it may seem um, I was just thinking. It's funny. I was just. I was just thinking about this earlier this morning. Like the fact that Cody, like, it's very old school. And I mean, that's, that's what Jim Ross said tonight. He said it's old school, man. Like it is. It's very old school. Like Cody. The difference between this happening here in AEW, and I don't mean. I look. I don't mean to com- to, to compare or nothing like that. Compare. I know the AEW. The AEW smarks are gonna love this one. Here, here comes the <laughs> AEW disc, but. The AEW no 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 this this is this is good on AEW's part. The the Here difference between this, but if this happened in WWE <laughs> <laughs> that's what's coming. That's what's coming. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> if this happened in WWE, then then people people wouldn't like it. But also I feel like WWE wouldn't have handled it as well as AEW has. You yeah, would have probably had Michael Cole in WWE. It would have been like fucking No Way Jose or yeah. <laughs> like fucking right. like, Cedric Alexander. Cedric I Alexander. mean, we probably or, or we, 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 we probably would have <laughs> listen. We probably would have gotten uh, Jim Ross. Or I'm I'm sorry, Michael Cole going. And next, we've got Cody in a ten lashes match. Up next. As opposed to, you know, hearing it AEW, you've got Ross and Excalibur and Shivani like devastated that this is even happening. You know what I mean? Like, oh God, like Cody's 10 lashes. But you know, and Cody doesn't want to do it, but he knows he has to do what he has to do to get to MJF. That's the whole point. He not, he, he's, 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 he's not going out like no sucker. He know what he got to do. And that's one thing I appreciate about this feud, about how they're handling this feud, about Cody in general, is because he can sell it and he can make you. The only thing I didn't like was I felt like tonight was overly done, like having Brandy and 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 Dustin and Aunt Arn Anderson all down there, basically holding his hand. No, please stop. Enough. En- you know what I'm saying? Like that kind of was just weird. A little too much. 
I think I think we said it like time and time again that Cody is the like the most consistently interesting character performer on AEW television. Like they yep. take a lot of time with his stories, and I think that they're doing the same thing uh, a little bit in a sense with the the Jericho and Moxley thing. Like they're they're taking the time to make it personal, and they're taking the time to make it matter. And then you got a bunch of the new wave stuff. Like you get your your private party and your young bucks matches, and you get your your fast pace. Lucha Bros shit, and you get your your hybrid two and all of that. You know, you mix all that in with your Dark Order and your Gothic gimmicks, and you squeeze in some Orange Cassidy. And there you go, a nice little, show. little AEW gumbo. You know, Cody's winning World War Three. Yeah, I'm calling it. AEW is going to do a World War Three, and Cody's winning it, and that's how he's going to get his chance at the world title. Book that's it. He's going to get his chance at the world title. I like that. Okay, um, I do want to read these really quickly. Um, I, I asked uh, the uh, Instagram audience if it was down to them or if it was up to them, rather, who would they uh, make the AEW world champion, the women's champion, and the tag team champions. Um, let's see here if I could go ahead and open this up. AEW champion Isaiah Cassidy. AEW women's champion Swole. AEW tag champion Mark Quinn and, S- and Scorpio Sky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like that. Private Scorpio. Private Scorpio. All right. Uh, let's see. Royal says uh, this is at just underscore Royal Flush. Uh, uh, Moxley, uh, Britt Baker Mayfield, and Private Party. I said put them all in a group. Call them the MVP, the most ballinest players. <laughs> That'd be dope. That'd be dope. We did that. Uh, Coach Davis uh, at Coach Davis six. Says uh, Kenny Omega, Private Party, and Big Swellington. Y'all talking about Big Swole? I'm rolling with that. It's a matter of time. <clears throat> Scott Sheed says uh, Jericho, Santana, Ortiz, and uh, Awesome Kong need to build the heels up. At Matt Speaks Wrestling says Omega, Britt Baker, and the Young Bucks. I think we're probably at some point going to get that exact lineup of champions oh, in AEW. Man. Uh, there at there once was a boy named D'Lo said uh, Pack Nyla Rose and the Butcher and the Blade. What? Yeah, I liked it that. Why? I, I like all of their characters. I think that uh, this nigga got a monocle. This nigga got a monocle. Yeah, blood. Whole ass <laughs> monocle, nigga. Whole ass monocle. And the Dwayne King says uh, Kenny Omega, Private Party, and Nyla. So thank y'all for that. Um, should I do power rankings real quick? I'll run to the power rankings really quickly, and then we could do uh, NXT. Yeah. All right, so yeah. let's do power rankings. Shout out to everybody that's uh, voted in the power rankings so far. You can vote in the power rankings on Instagram and in our Instagram stories. You can take the poll. Uh, poll will begin once again next week on Instagram, once again, at Public Enemies Pod. Uh, men's division, women's division, and tag team division power rankings are – <clears throat> excuse me, are all individually ranked. You can uh, vote for anybody in any wrestling company across the board. We tally up all of the votes, and we pick uh, the winners that way. Uh, right now, we've got for the uh, men's division <clears throat> in the PE3 power rankings, number five, John Moxley of AEW. Number four, Chris Jericho of AEW. You got it good. Number three, Brock Lesnar uh, <clears throat> from Raw. Well, he a champ, huh? Uh, yes, indeed. He is the champion. He is the WWE champion. Brock Lesnar at number three. Keith Lee is the uh, North American champion from NXT. He is number two. He black. Yes, indeed. And then Drew McIntyre, the 2020 uh, Royal Rumble winner, is number one. He's happy that Scott, uh, Salt Lake City got out there through this blizzard. Definitely, he's definitely happy to Salt Lake City came and fucked with him, pulled up and did the did the little countdown thing with him, and you know, then he kicked dude head off. Poor Mojo. Uh, winners, uh, women's division, winners division. Yes, the winners division, the women's division. Uh, looks like number five, we got Naomi and her black excellence pulling up. Uh, SmackDown. There was also an article in Essence magazine that they did a nice little piece on Naomi, Bianca Belair, and um, Ember Moon. Hey, if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check that out. Britt Baker Mayfield is at number four on the power rankings uh, from AEW. Britt Baker Mayfield, shout out to you. Tron doesn't like your mandible claw. Rings of Saturn move. He doesn't like it at all. What do you want to do, Tron? Last shot? You want to do the last (laughs) shot? You want to do the super kick? Easy peasy Oscar at number (laughs) three. (laughs) 
Bianca Belair, another 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 black queen at number two. About to be champ. And Charlotte Flair at number one. Charlotte Flair's number one. The queen. Tag team division, power rankings. We got number five, the Undisputed Era. Number four, the Usos, SmackDown. Number three, the Raw Tag Team Champions, Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy Lee. Did we give them a name yet? No, they haven't given them. They keep asking us to name the group, and then they won't fucking name the group. Figure it out yourselves. Uh, number two, the Bros are Weights, number one contenders to the NXT Tag Team Championships. And number one in the Tag Team Division Power Rankings, Kenny Omega and Hangman Page, the current AEW Tag Team Champions. Again, if you want to vote in the Power Rankings, you can go ahead and hit us up at the Enemies POD on Twitter or uh, do the polls on uh, Public Enemies Pod on Instagram. No Nick Aldis talk. The, uh, hey, man, you can vote for anybody across the board. That's New Japan, that's WWE, that's NXT, that's AEW, that's NWA. Do what you want to do. No Nick Aldis talk. Hey, he said what he said. Tron, you want to take us to NXT? Let's get to the NXT <clears throat> with T R O N I C. Tronic. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, all right, so look. NXT Tronic. Nextronic. Ooh. Ooh. Griffin got paying for that. There's an R on that. Let's pay for you, you try. Got to pay for this. Excuse me. <laughs> 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 All right, look. Um, NXT, man. I mean, I don't even know where to start. I mean, we... From the we, beginning. <sighs> All right. Just talk about the dirt <laughs> You, you said talk about the dirt sheets? Oh, well, I, I could say something about the dirt sheets. No, I'm playing. They ain't supposed to be talking to them. Look, man, why do browser ways pull up like that, CJ? Bruh, you know why? Because <laughs> black excellence, all right? <laughs> why, why, <laughs> why do browser ways pull up in a in a in a browser way in, in the browser golf cart with the browser trophy on the back? Shit had lights, blood. That shit had lights. And, <laughs> and, and they got the little graphic thing. Did, did they have that last week? The browser weight. The, not the little browser weight Tron that, that they had. Oh, no. I thought they had like a little. Hey, squ- just, oh, I see, oh, yeah. They just fucking blend their music. I don't remember them having that Titan Tron before, though. Yeah, that, that shit was fire. I was like, okay, I see what the fuck going on here. Um, but yeah, they 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 you know they came out styling and profiling, doing their thing. Um, and then uh, the, you know the NXT tag champs didn't really, they were really you know they ain't really feeling them right now. You know what I'm saying? They're like, nah, 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 nah. We f- we finna kill all this noise right now. And then of course they had the bro start this corny ass chant. What yeah. Was- that was corny. The fish, how much fish could Bobby fish fish? Fry. fish just, how, how much fish? Man. How much Bob? How much fish could Bobby fish fry? If Bobby fish could fry fry fish. Okay. How much fish could Bobby fish fry? If Bobby fish could fry fish. Yeah, that's anti-black. <laughs> he said, "Hold on, Matt, Matt Rydell and Pete Peter Dune." <laughs> <laughs> Peter Dune. Peter was, Dune and Matt Rydell. I was like, thank you, thank you, Kyle. Kyle Rydell is like Parks. <laughs> I'm like, yo, this shit is take the take the mic away from him right now. Let's let's get let's get it over with. Let's stop it. Let's stop it. They Nonetheless, rambling. though, it, it yeah, was they ramble. Kind of like we're rambling right now. Yeah, they ramble for a little bit. <laughs> they got their ramble on. They, they got they, their ramble on. You yeah. know, but it is what it is. Angel Garza, yeah. Isaiah Swerve, Scott. Um, Garza's back in the, I, I call it the NXT uh, zone. <laughs> um, why? Double, why is he d- back? D- d- double duty. Yeah, I don't know. Is, it, is, is he going to be pulling double duty or is they just for, pulling double duty for, for 28 days? Yeah, for 28 yeah, right, days. Right, until Andrade gets back? Yeah, then you take your ass from there. You can, then you can fight fucking Swerve for the belt when he wins it. <laughs> Hmm. After uh, what you say, Delvin wasn't Delvin supposed to be on? Yeah, he was there. Oh, he no, fought. He Devin fought um, Prince Pretty. 
Prince Pretty in a fucking fast paced banger. That shit was lit. That shit was lit. That shit was a bang. I almost thought I almost thought Breeze should have won it just because Breeze was doing so damn good in that match. Uh, but, that headbutt boy, headbutt but they, bite. But they can't they 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 can't have a cruiserweight champ lose like that. Not after not after that fantastic win he had to win it. So you know it is what it is. But I wanted to go back to Garza because one thing they did do is that they I mean at least they didn't shy away from him being on Raw and what he did to Mysterio because after that he. Talked about what he did to Mysterio, what he did to his cousin, um, and then he said basically he, you know, he wants his title back. He want my belt back. Basically, he said he didn't lose it. He said Swerve lost it. Swerve lost it, and he beat Swerve. So I'm technically champ now, right? So he's gonna pull double duty on Raw, I guess. Yeah. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna be really dope once they like. Put a put an actual focus on him on a main uh, main roster storyline and spotlight yeah. him as a character. He has char- char- charisma. Yeah, he has in in I guess in a sense an it factor just because he knows how to talk um, and he can talk pretty fucking good. That promo that he cut on Monday, yeah, he did that one. Was dope. He did one in the ring too, and that shit was pretty good. He can he he, he yeah. I mean, I fuck with Angel Garza. Yeah, he's dope. Yeah, all right. Garza's dope. Uh, well, next, we have Dominic. <laughs> Angel Del Rio. Dominic Dijakovic and Killian Dane. I was surprised to see Killian Dane. I almost didn't know who he, who he was when his music hit. I was like, what? Who is it? I was like, oh, shit, it's Killian Dane. All right, got it. <laughs> yeah, he about to get his ass beat, and he did. Okay, Dane bite. <laughs> Dane bite, everybody bite. Okay, tell us Everybody about, I don't really care about the match. Of course, Dominic Dijakovic. You know, he coming for that North American Championship. They made the match official for TakeOver Portland. Keith yeah. Lee, Dominic Dijakovic. That should be a good one. Um, Mer- Mer- Mercedes Martinez put the beating on Casey Catanzaro. I was wondering if they were going to give Mercedes Martinez the win, considering Casey Catanzaro was absent from NXT for such a long time. Um yeah, I, I didn't. It was her first uh, NXT match back, right? Because she did the rumble yep. and is now here. Yep. Call, call her well, she was, well, she was. She was at. She was at. Oh, um, she was in the. She was in the NXT she was battle, battle royal. royal. Yeah, yeah, she was in the battle royal. Um, okay, my bad. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep. Um, Jordan yeah. Devlin, Tyler Breeze. We touched on that for a minute. Uh, Devlin picked up the victory. Um, the whole night it seemed like the undisputed era was looking for uh, Goldie's daddy, and. Uh, they, <laughs> Beating up everybody in sight. <laughs> uh, they they seemed like. No, they <laughs> were. That's what they were doing. <laughs> well, That's exactly what they did. <laughs> they s- smacked some dude's phone out of his hand, threw him into a bunch of boxes, threw somebody in a trash can. They were fucking they, shit up. Yeah, they threw fucking, they threw fucking Kushida through a fucking, like a whole bunch of shit. Then Bronson Reed comes up like he's about to fucking do something. It gets fucking power need by fucking Roddy. And it was Roddy doing, and then some dude was getting his hair cut, and then Roddy was like, come here, come here. It just, just cuts dude's hair, like just cut all of his hair off midway. Okay, and so then left. Roddy's in the Nightmare Collective? I don't know, man. Roddy, it seemed like they had Roddy doing little homie <laughs> shit since he's the one that lost, broke up the prophecy and lost the belt. Ah. Uh... Roddy's the anyway. He, he, Roddy do all the dirty work. Yo, get up there and do the stuff, nigga, because you ain't got no belt no more. We got a whole belt. Roddy do all the dirty work, especially now because he ain't got no title. He ain't got shit to do. I got to do something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a brawl spilled out into the arena. Tommaso Ciampa and Adam Cole, baby, uh, ended up at the announce table. And then all hell just broke loose, and William Regal came out, and he was just like, "Hey, bros are bros are bros." Uh, War games. Champ- <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't at the War Games announced announced great. That's it. That's it. War games. <laughs> like damn, right now. <laughs> Yes, today we calm down. NXT Portland take over War Games. <laughs> WrestleMania <laughs> War Games. Niggas didn't even listen. Like, hold on, let me get, let me get, to, let me get, to, let me get to my announcement, Craig. That's World what they listen to. Like War Games. Well, he came out. He came out. W- and, w- w- a, 
He broke it up, came out and said, get your gear on. This match is happening tonight. And they still kept fighting. They still kept fighting. <laughs> But that was the first time I seen like one of them when all the security come out. They just start running through security like, man, y'all niggas security. Get the fuck out the way, man. This nigga Matt Riddle fucking power toss, fucking power toss security guard, but then gave a a, a lightweight love punch to Adam Cole. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. And he beat down. Hey man, they were fucking punching each other and shit. Adam Cole kept punching Roddy, which is probably what he really wanted to do because he broke up the prophecy. <laughs> All right. So what am I supposed to do? <laughs> you see how big even Brock Lesnar could do anything, Adam. Right. Uh. So this is what I've been. This is what I was waiting on the whole night. Uh, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley supposed to come face to face, and of course, our everyone knew. I already knew Charlotte was going to get involved in this, and she was coming out to answer the challenge laid by Rhea Ripley. Um, for WrestleMania, and Bianca Belair basically came out and was like, mm-hmm. "Try, try, try." Before you go, I want to explain to Graham the amazingness of Bianca Belair. First of all, she came out in a shirt with melanin <laughs> written all over it, <laughs> and it was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Did she? I wonder if she made this shirt herself. It, if she made that shit herself, she makes all her gear. She it was she was she was just in like regular. If she made that shirt herself, she needs to sell that. She will make millions. That melanin shirt was lit. That's dope. Wow. And yeah, she uh, and then fucking Charlotte comes out in all her Charlotteness. Was she dressed in her Charlotte gear and her robe and all of that? No, she out. No, she was she, she was close. she out on her she out on her Charlotte pink pants. Yeah, she's just like Nicki Minaj's husband. <laughs> and, oh God, got him! And um, <laughs> yeah, she came out, nigga, <laughs> talking that shit. Bianca, like you're impressive, Bianca, but you're not the queen. And then here comes Rhea Ripley and her extremely aggressive music. That shit is aggressive. The music's aggressive, and Rhea Ripley is most definitely aggressive. That's why she's the NXT Women's Champ. But yeah. uh, Charlotte, yeah. Charlotte, basically standing there. <clears throat> I mean, it is what it is. It, it, look, Charlotte obviously looks like she wants Rhea Ripley or the NXT Championship at WrestleMania. But obviously, we can't look past Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley at Takeover Portland. That's you exactly know, what they're doing. Yeah. Char- Charlotte trying to get in the head of Bianca, though, telling her, like, hey, she overlooked you. Like, she she ain't even thinking about you. She came out and challenged me. She thinking about WrestleMania. And, you know, Bianca's not having that. So, Bianca's like, look, I'm going to handle business over here, and then I'm going to come take – I'm going I'm to come fuck you up at WrestleMania. She said, you don't even go here. Yeah, you don't even go here. I love that. That's her thing now. Yeah. I like that. And then she I said, like and you can't whoop me. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. She said to Charlotte, you don't even go here. And then looked at Rhea was like, and you can't whoop me. <laughs> and then Charlotte tells her, get out of my way. Go over there and fix your braid. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then, and then, and then Rhea Ripley head, goes, you suckers. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and, then, and, then and then Red, and then Red Ripley goes, I didn't come over to your brand and disrespect you like that. You're not gonna come here and disrespect us. Uh, okay, now you wanna be friends. <laughs> <laughs> then, they, yeah. then they jumped her. Yeah. <laughs> then they, they jumped, jumped her. Charlotte. They laid Charlotte okay. out. Ooh, that's what's up. That's what's up. I like that. Yeah, they did the stare down and they pointed at the um Portland takeover sign that was on the ground. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> No, they didn't. They didn't put that on the side. Did you did you believe me for a little bit? <laughs> yes. I was gonna, hey, CJ, I was gonna let you run with that one. I was hey, like, man. Hell yeah. I wasn't gonna do that to him, man. I was there's no way I was gonna be able to hold that face. Oh my god. Timestamp that. We gotta make that a clip. And they just pointed to the ground, nigga, like, Ugh, like the WrestleMania shit just take over next week. We'll see you next Sunday. Ugh, it's at the ground right there. 
man. Quentin the ground fireworks go. Oh yeah, the Bruiserweight, <laughs> oh, the Bruiserweight fucking shit had fucking um, pyro on it. Oh yeah, on the little, the little, the on the little, little super car. Yeah, the little car thing. Yeah, that was cool. All right, what else happened on NXT? We're running out of time. The six man. Um, the six, yeah. Uh, Pete Dunn, Matt Riddle, Tommaso Champa, undisputed era, ended in disqualification with Pete Dunn, Matt Riddle, and Tommaso Champa picking up the victory. Roger Strong interfered, of course. You got to know it. You got to love it. After the match, um, the undisputed era took out Dunn and Riddle, and they spray painted an X on the back of Tommaso Champa. Oh, okay. Beat so him down. The old thing, huh? With the spray paint on yeah, it. Man, call back to last week. Well, they've done that before, right? Oh, uh, no, I he spray painted the X on the on the table. On the table. Yeah. Uh-huh. I like that. He's spray painted the X on the table, so they did it to him here. And then two five twenty, okay, which is yesterday, right? Comes on the screen. Gotcha. Three circles. Talk to me. And the circles then form like Voltron <laughs> into the dream glasses. Ooh. Into the dream jaws, huh? And all of a sudden, that nigga, niggas go back, and that nigga's already just standing up on the top rope in all his black excellence. <laughs> hit, the, hit the double axe handle, though. <laughs> yeah, he hit a double axe handle. And, and that, was his, that was his big comeback move? It was like, it was, I don't know if he was trying to make it like a, like a, like a double clothesline, uh, Jordan Devlin headbutt combo, but it turned out to be a double axe. Handle that took that took out thrill. How did it work? Work cool. It, it dream is back, nigga. Worked out well, all right. All you know right what I'm saying? So he he washed all of them. Like uh, the Adam Cole caught a super kick, caught a super dream kick. Mm-hmm. Um, Kyle O'Reilly caught a fucking um, Dream Valley driver, and then he he just he um, he ripped his top layer of pants off, Angel Garza style, and revealed his um, tights. That had Roderick Strong's kid and wife on there. Oh, fucking, fucking dope. He had a and bit then, of trouble ripping off the top layer, though. Yeah, yeah, he had he had to peel it off. He's cutting off, man. That's that's a little personal, man. Oh wait, wait, and then on the back of it, it said, "Call me up, Marina." Oh, them is fighting pants. Some fighting <laughs> pants, right there. Fighting pants, right there. <laughs> them fighting pants. That you gotta love it. Yeah. You gonna see me bro, right here outside full sale. Do you know what? Do you know what I do? Like, do you, do you know what, what I'm the Messiah? Right. Yeah, man. You gotta see me. Like, do you like your back? You, you, could, not, not, you could not have one. You oh, you only, you must not like your back. Talk doing things like this. Right. Dream. You better have eyes in the back of your back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> the fuck you up, You man. better have eyes in the back of your back. That's what Roddy gonna say to that nigga, man. All right. That was it. That's all the NXT, huh? Yeah. Oh, you know what? That I was the wrap-up. Um, I read that New Japan might be in preliminary talks with Vice Land uh, to be on to be on Vice. Oh. That would be a nice move. I'm not even going to hold you. Uh, Vice Land has, like, the dark side of the ring thing. And then... Um, they just lost Fuck That's Delicious. So, you know, they... Yeah, need, I know Action Bronson's pissed yeah. off about that. Um, but yeah, that would be dope to have the, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling as the, the, the wrestling program on Vice. <laughs> we got we gotta buy Vice to see, to see, to, to see Zack Sabre Jr. <laughs> Ronda Rousey said that she doesn't want to come back full time. She said it's not, uh, good for if you're trying to con- conceive. Yeah, she's right. Yeah, so she did that. She said that. So. And she deserves it, nigga. I made you... A, a boatload of money when right. I was there for that full year. I look, sure the fuck you, you did. You kissed my whole ass, nigga. How many uh, of these Rowdy Rowdy Ronda Rousey shirts you fucking sell? Big you boat. Big boatloads. Braun Strowman is the Intercontinental Champion. He beat uh, Shinsuke last Friday on SmackDown. How do you guys feel about Braun finally uh, getting a singles title? Finally. Like, is it too late? Is it? Is it? Uh, is it just right on time? Are they going to be able to have a successful run? No, right on time for what? I don't know. Like, do you do you care, or is it too late? Man, anybody care about the Intercontinental Title for a while? Yeah, Shinsuke has been a champion since like what, like SummerSlam or right before SummerSlam, yeah. and he's barely defended it. This nigga changed. Nigga made made a whole new design for the belt just to not to do nothing with it. For two, three months, damn near. Nigga had a whole new design for a belt just to lose it. First time you defend a new design. Damn, that's true. I like it. You like Braun as IC champion? I do. 
how do you how do you think they're gonna book him? By do you think they're gonna book him as like a silly silly champion? He's gonna continue like the hip swirl and the twirling and dancing and shit like with the new day or is it a, like, need to have an open challenge. Nigga. <clears throat> I think I think he'll be dominant. It, Goldberg will be Goldberg will be nice, but I, no, I would it be? It would not be at all. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Goldberg is fighting Matt Riddle. Goldberg is not going to fight Matt Riddle. Matt, Matt Riddle is going to come up from NXT like like Rhea Ripley did. Yeah, just come out right right there during the just doing whatever he's talking. Rhea Riddle. Rhea Riddle. <laughs> Matt Ripley. Hey, Matt Ripley sounds kind of. That's not real. Ripple me this. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, that's interesting. I wonder what's next for Shinsuke and Cesaro. Make them a tag team. I mean, New Day got to fight somebody. That's probably going to be. Well, I don't know. I don't. Well, I don't know if they're really going to come together and do that elimination chamber thing. But if not, then insert them in the tag title picture. Uh, Miz and Morrison, New Day, uh, Heavy Machinery. Shinsuke Cesaro, that's a pretty nice tag team division. Who else is over there? I can't really think of it. Uh, the Revival is on SmackDown, too. <laughs> Them niggas Usos. trying to quit. The Usos. The Usos is on Raw, ain't they? No, the Usos is on SmackDown. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. oh, yeah, that's how you get the fucking gang gang. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Bloodline gang gang. Uh, Ruby Riot's back. Hey. She, she attacked uh, Finally. On, on Raw. I am definitely excited for Ruby Riot to be back. How do you guys feel about Ruby Riot? We all like Ruby Ryan here, right? Love yeah. Ruby Ryan. Yeah, we've we come a long way from so. calling him step, stepped on absolution. Definitely. Definitely. That's hella funny. Yeah, we've come a long way from that. <laughs> so it's going to be a program with her and Liv Morgan, I guess. That's uh, like the obvious thing to do. to do. And then, of course, Ruby Riot is trustworthy enough to, to look good and then make Liv look as good as she can, too, as well. Yeah, Liv, Liv can do some shit, though. Liv can definitely do some shit, but just... Being in there with, with Ruby and somebody yeah, that somebody she knows experiences gonna, her. Yeah, she's going to be able to lead the way and, you know, make both of them be able to turn out good matches. Um, turn up! Speaking of turning out good matches, uh, people that are uh, familiar with each other, Asuka and Natty, they had a little exchange that looked like they, they were kind of shooting on each other a little bit. They they got a little physical there. Who worked themselves into a shoot? Hey, it's a shoot until you work yourself into a work after you work yourself into a shoot when you shoot when you're shooting, brother. You want to shoot on me? That's exactly what she said. And I was like, whoa, wait a second. What happened? I had to go back and watch the clip again. Ooh, like, oh, we got a little serious in there a little bit. Ooh, that little backhand. Yeah, I wonder if uh, I wonder if if uh, if that was just like her just being serious. But she called her a bitch like two, three times, though. She was like, come on, bitch. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> she wasn't playing. The Oscar like, all right, bitch. Ne- uh, cracks neck. Easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, say less. <laughs> Easy oh, peasy. Oh, you know. Who, oh, you must not know who you fucking with. Right, right, right. No, you must not know who you, you fucking, fucking with, with nigga. <laughs> Bitch, I just survived a shooting last week at the Vegas uh, at the mall. Bitch, I'm gonna have to train in a dungeon. What do you guys think about the Randy Orton promo from Raw? He was supposed to be explaining his actions of the uh, the whole thing with Edge and all of that. <clears throat> He didn't really like. He could barely get anything out. He didn't say anything. He was like struggling with it. The crowd was booing the shit out of him. He got a pretty good reaction from people that weren't coming out. I guess because of the snowstorm and shit like that. And they motherfuckers filled up uh, from what they showed you. Yeah, you know, it might be slight skewed. Yeah, AW slight, slight skewed. Numbers. I noticed that they stopped panning at a certain point when they was doing the pan, but it's all yeah. good. Are you ready? Yeah, the same 70, 74 niggas. That's hella funny. But yeah, uh, Randy Orton, <laughs> the whole, I'm struggling to 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 get this out. Can I can I really do this? I mean, I you know he did his whole little little yeah he went through the motions and all of that. He kind of like killed Margaret right before he died. Trump, what do you think his explanation is going to be? If there's going to be an explanation, do you think he's just going to be like, you know what, fuck it, I'm Randy Orton, I do what I want when I want. I think it's a little bit of a both. I I I I think he'll have some type of explanation. Maybe like motherfucker, how you gonna come back here? Like, and then I also think that he's just gonna be like, fuck it. I mean, he is the legend killer. You know, yeah. he's dealing with he's dealing with a, a hall of famer. You know, Man, legend Randy, killer bite. Rand, Randy's not yet a hall of famer, so this is this is a very fitting story. Um, they have history. I like it. 
If we get one more run at Legend Killer, uh, what do we call him? No fucks, zero fucks, Orton. Zero fucks, uh, Orton. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with that. I don't forget you said nigga though. I'm just, I'm just gonna throw that out there. It's Black History Month. Yeah. So I'm obligated to say that. Legend Killer still bite, but you know you did say that. Fuck, he did. <laughs> yeah, I can't. So, I can't. I'm, I'm on edge of side here. <laughs> Ed had, had a live sex celebration. So yeah, I, don't know, with, you, I don't know if you don't know if you know that. Yeah, I'm rolling with Edge here. Sorry. He almost he almost cried coming into the Royal Rumble and then and then separated AJ Styles' shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> so would you look at that? It's just the adrenaline. Man, on this day, your shoulder got separated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. You want to take a smoke break? <laughs> I think we deserve that, right? <laughs> yeah. God, man. I think we deserve a smoke break. <laughs> yeah, man, we free earned smoke, it. Free you know smoke, free smoke. We've all earned it. You earned it. I definitely earned it. I mean, you know, I mean, you lost the. Okay, okay, okay. Do you know? No, we 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 gonna go to, hey, <laughs> hey, yeah. Hey, we call him yeah, hey, yeah. You a killer, dog. <laughs> I like that energy. I love that energy, actually. Did you dare? Yeah, come on. Fix your mouth to speak about the captain ever again. <laughs> you, Justice Winslow, Jaron Jackson, yeah, 3J. Call y'all niggas 3J. 3J and Dylan. Oh, 3J and Dylan. Yeah, 3JG. I, I can't wait to, to JD3. Till we, till we, till we trade him so we can so we can play him and we can show him what Memphis is about. Oh yeah, you, oh yeah. So you can't wait yeah, to yeah, yeah, you can't okay. wait for fucking Bam Bam to go 20 and 17 on your head. And Iggy is gonna drop his fucking <laughs> 11. He's gonna have gonna have my 11 points. You know what I'm saying? And then Bam and then Tyler Hero is gonna fucking turn Ja into a fucking Swiss cheese. Look, Ja, I understand. I respect the fucking hustle. And you got a nice little team over there. But I think you should be worried about holding on Portland instead of worrying about a team with 12 wins. Because whenever... And he's coming back. He's coming back. March, nigga. And he gives you 50. And that nigga is dabbing on the fucking in the middle of Memphis. Keep that energy. I want that energy. Both y'all niggas. <laughs> both y'all niggas. Y'all, y'all, both y'all niggas might get 27 apiece. Boost the niggas up right quick. Bye, yeah, bye. Yeah, you get a 27. You get a 27. <laughs> Be like, nigga, Oprah show in this bitch. Nigga, you know I'm very generous, nigga. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, speaking of which, uh, since you're speaking to that situation, uh, Iggy traded to the Miami Heat. Uh, from the Grizzlies, of course. Uh, he, what was it? A two-year deal? A two-year yeah, extension. Yeah, extension. Two-year extension. Thirty million. Sheesh. Thirty million. Pat Riley, like real nigga. Hey, Pat Riley, the experienced niggas over there, man. He got enough young talent over there. Mm-hmm. Between Kendrick Noon and motherfucking Tyler Hero and and Bam, all first-time All Star. Shout out to Bam. Jimmy Butler, you know what I'm saying? He's uh, Jimmy Butler. He seems to be rude and lucky boobs. <laughs> What's going on? Minnesota tried to trade everybody, and, and Philadelphia's imploding. <laughs> but this is Jimmy Butler for Jimmy Butler got them young boys <laughs> playing. <laughs> yeah, they nice over there. They nice over there in Miami, and they got New Jerseys. I like watching Miami play. Tron doesn't like it though. Oh, fuck Miami. See? See? But, man, but we got to bury something today. Oh, Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. Yeah. Because. Okay, cue up the funeral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when the gun blows, the shots call, the smoke clears. <laughs> <laughs> so, yesterday was. So, Sunday? Sunday. Was the, the biggest sporting event of the year? Of course. And we had, and you know, we tied in the um, in the Royal Rumble of uh, Worlds Collide predictions. Yeah, we did eleven eleven and something like that. Thirteen thirteen. Yeah, I think some, it was 11, yeah 11. some shit like that. Yeah. And yeah. we had to pick the Super Bowl. Yeah. And the yeah. champ got to pick the. Um, mm-hmm. I picked the. 
Yeah, he, he had to pick some bums. And, um, I did. I picked the Niners. Uh-oh. And, you know, because, you know, we throw them and they got, they got the run game, the neutralized Patrick Mahomes. And, no, they decided to fucking throw the ball, like, fucking, what was it, like, 11 times in the second half? Why? 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 Why are you Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> yeah, I'll coach yourself a little bit there, buddy. Did, out, <laughs> too smart, nigga. <laughs> Got in your own way again, dog. Like, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand how you can get in your own way twice. Twice. Especially after they've been talking about, hey, remember that time you got in your own way? Yeah. Well, you know, I wasn't the head coach. Well, you isn't the head coach, the defensive coach in um, Atlanta? How come you just didn't run the ball? Well, you know you got the number one rushing attack now. So, you know, I think you would run the ball. You got a 10-point lead. Doesn't he now have, like, the two, like, biggest uh, comeback comeback losses? Yeah. Or whatever? Yeah. Super Bowl? One, and then one. He has one big for the biggest ever, and then one for the biggest in the fourth quarter. Yeah. There you go. Remember when they got the interception? Yikes. Yeah. Remember when they got the interception, the second one that Pat Mahomes threw? The second one, yep. And niggas was sliding, sliding the motherfucking end zone, mm-hmm. take, taking, taking pictures. Taking third grade class pictures. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that looked great. Didn't pan out very well. No, oh, man, none of it did. None of it did. None of it did. I was remember seeing niggas saying that shit was over. Looked like it was, but as we said, <laughs> as you know. No lead is safe. With the as team. I know, as I seen <laughs> twice a year, I told you niggas, I said, listen, if you get up, and you probably will, you need to control it because he'll drop 28 points on your head in a quarter. I've seen it with my eyes, nigga. <laughs> we were up 10 nothing in week two. Coming off a win in week one, we didn't whoop the Whoop the shit out of the Broncos. We up 10 nothing on these niggas. The second quarter, they had fucking 28 points, nigga, going in the halftime, and they got the ball. And then they scored again. <laughs> on the other side of the half. Like, I told you, nigga, this was going to happen, but now I know I want to be. Nick Bosa, right? Nick Bosa going to be doing And Nick Bosa was doing this thing. It's not his fault. Yeah. Kittle was like, I will be back. I will be back with a fucking vengeance. Yeah, all right. All right. You know, Russell got another baby on the way, so that means he know he's going to need another contract soon, which means he's going to need another Super Bowl appearance, which means that you niggas ain't going nowhere. Niggas ain't doing shit. We put all our faith. I put all my – I even picked these niggas. All you niggas need to have your motherfucking heads back down. CJ is the new public enemy number one, y'all. Yeah. And I don't even want to be. <laughs> not under these circumstances. Not, not like this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and now, and now, and so, Niner fans, uh, how long have we been dealing with this? Uh, yeah, this is for y'all niggas, because now we're going to bury you niggas today. I've been real, real diplomatic and real calm. I'm saying with the slander to you motherfucker because y'all niggas is hurting. But then I got a little fucking, you know, a little uh, smart guy flashback was like, man, remember when them niggas was laughing when it was like, oh, y'all niggas moving to Vegas. Remember the whole, oh, you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Derek. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then I remember... Our four and twelve was better than y'all four and twelve because at least we beat y'all. And I thought, you know what? I gave y'all niggas a week. Mm-hmm. Give them a week. Let them chill. Let them live on it. Let them breathe. Let y'all let y'all stew in it. And now I'm here to kick the pot over. You first of all, don't speak this Bay Area unity bullshit to me. <laughs> if you're whoever was cheering for the Chiefs, man, how Raider fan cheering for the Chiefs? I guarantee you, there was not a Raider fan, a real Raider fan cheering for the Chiefs. And it wasn't because 
of this Bay Area Unity bullshit that you're talking about. <laughs> we hate both you niggas. Right. <laughs> we just hate y'all niggas less than them. <laughs> the fuck is y'all? Yo, I can't believe y'all cheer for the chief. And then, so now, now these niggas want to talk this up. Uh, if y'all team didn't even make it to the playoffs, then the, every team's objective from the time they step into mini camp and training camp and rookie camp mm -hmm. is to win the fucking Super Bowl. Whether you get eliminated in week nine right. or you lose in the fucking Super Bowl. Like nobody's going out there and, and getting ready for the season and like, you know what? At least we may, I want to make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, let's go out and go seven and nine, y'all. Nigga, what? <laughs> exactly. Nah, nigga. Nobody's gonna be excited for that. I think my team is always gonna go 16 and 0. No matter what. And you niggas just don't know how to take an L. And the fun and the funniest thing, and the funniest thing about this, these niggas blowing this lead, I know a lot of Niner fans, right? Up by 10 in the fourth. Bro, and then he dropped 21 on your head. And all y'all niggas that said Damian Wim should have been the MVP, I agree with you. But Pat Mahomes took a fucking V trigger to the head in the game <laughs> and survived it. So I was like, you know what? Go ahead and give it to him. Took a couple of them things. Damian Wynn was like, I try to go to no fucking Disney World. <laughs> Think I'm finna say that shit? Nigga, fuck out of here, nigga. I'm going to the block, nigga. The now, block. The motherfucking block. The, the, the block. You niggas lost. And no, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. The funniest thing about that shit. I know a lot of Niner fans, right, who made a lot of jokes about a lead being blown mm. by a team in the Bay Area. Oh yeah, yeah. And now look at look at look at oh 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 how the tables have turned. Oh my goodness! Oh how the tables have turned. Even even though the Chiefs won, this it, it it just it was it was like a double edged sword. Because the only Chiefs fans I know is this nigga Israel85 and Tech9. <laughs> nigga, that's all I got. That's all I know right now. But I know of millions and millions of Niner fans, and I know you guys were all hurting, and it, and it, and it brought, a little, brought a little smile to my black little heart. <laughs> because we had to sit through bang, 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 not a gang. Do the Jeff Hardy fucking finger guns to your mouths and shit. <laughs> Who bang, are we? <laughs> bang, 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 not a gang. Hey, man. Second place, nigga. Second, second place. Second place. Second place. It just sparked off a whole beef between Fody and Richie Rich. What's Dude. going on there? <laughs> need to calm down. Hey, legends need to Who are together. we? Peace, 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 God. Yeah, peace, come on, God. man. Blue and red make purple. There you go. I'm talking about. All right. What else we got? What else we got? Count out. Ha ha. Count out. Ha ha. Motherfucker. Ha. You should be happy with me, Grant. Oh, yeah. You picked them, huh? Yeah, I did. I did. We put our faith in you. Oh, you guys fucking suck. I uh, don't really have anything else to say about this other than it looks like Vegas pulled in about $18.7 million off of Super Bowl bets. Shit. That's cool. We believed in you, Niners! That's cool. Uh, Dak, this franchise tag talk. <laughs> What's going on with that, man? They're they going to they franchise tag Dak? Uh, uh, Dak? Uh, can I fucking talk? <sighs> Take two. Dakota. Right. Rain Dakota Prescott. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Rain Dakota Prescott is getting franchise tinagged. Oh, man. But the thing is, like, if he, even if he did show up and sign the tag, which he probably would end up doing anyway, he's if they gonna, don't, he's gonna sign it. He's gonna get fucking thirty million dollars. I mean, that's cool, but I know you want the long term stability. Exactly. And, that's that's what. I'm, excuse me. That's what I'm gonna get you. <clears throat> and all that other shit. But remember, remember what happened with Kirk Cousins. Yeah, gave him that money, and then it was. <laughs> They tagged him. I'm talking about how they yeah, how they yeah, tagged him. And they tagged him. And they, they tagged him. Then they were paying him to a corner. They was like, well, well fuck it then. Right. We'll get Alex Smith. <laughs> fucked up. Fucked up the whole game. How you going to pay Zeke and Jalen Smith and DeMarcus Lawrence and not pay Dak Prescott? Well, if you pay Dak, you automatically eliminate paying Amari Cooper. 
You know, he gave him eight games anyway. He's a home game player. And then, so. Make my, Michael Gallup was fucking yeah. got a thousand yards this season, too. You still got Tavon Austin. You're going to get rid of. um. Cobb. You're going to get rid of fucking. Um, you still got Jarwin. You're going to get rid of fucking uh, Jason Witten's old ass. He's got to go. Dak, this franchise tag, though, you think you think he stays in Dallas beyond next year? I mean, who needs a quarterback? You know what I'm saying? Like the Chargers. I mean, they draft at five, so yeah, they might, be they might get Tom Brady. Yep, there you go, Brady. Brady, Brady. Well, rumor have it, the word on the tweets is uh, the Oakland Raiders huh? are interested in uh, the who? Tom Brady. The Raiders might be interested <laughs> in Tom Brady. Oh, excuse me, the Las Vegas Raiders might be interested in Tom Brady. <laughs> Oh, we oh so word on the tweets is also that New England is willing to pay Brady thirty million dollars a year to stay. I seen so that shit, and I was yeah. like, "God, another year of mediocrity for for the Patriots." Because who else are they gonna pay? They get this nigga another thirty million. We'll, shit, we'll get anybody and plug the motherfuckers in. You see what we've been doing yeah, over nigga. here? Hey, Vontez Burfitt. All right, so that we heard, hey, Tony O'Brien's gonna got to do eight games. All right. So, all right. so we're gonna do. We'll get him in there. Look, Tom, please, man. It's cold, Tom. Please, it's gonna be you and Josh. I promise. Shout out to Dak, man. Get your money, though, man. Get your money, man. Hold out, man. but they can't do no better. Yeah, they can't do no better, dog. End up signing. He's gonna end up signing that tag, bro. I mean, eventually you're gonna have to do it. Take it thirty years. You feel me? Go on. Yeah, Take it thirty, and then out. and then do the same thing, and then now they're gonna have to pay you after Pat Mahomes gets his deal. About Dak up there in Cincinnati. They're getting Joe Burrow. They're talking about trading that pick too. They might. That's no problem if they do trade it. Dak, Dak with Tyler Boyd and Joe Mixon up there. That's a nice little Tyler Eifert for thirteen percent of the time. Right. <laughs> you know they got a franchise tag on AJ Green. Yeah. What are they gonna do with him? Yeah. You, you owe AJ Green your 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 life. Right. <laughs> you better cash that man out. Yeah, you better man. get that man some money, nigga, and shut your mouth. <laughs> you don't even want the money. They were like, eh, you know, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really don't. I kind of don't want. You know what I mean? I like I like to go to the. I think gonna be a patriot next year. That's how they go. That's how they gonna suck time in. They gonna be like, we got AJ right, Green. Right, we got AJ Green. We got AJ Green. Like, what you gonna do? You wanna come back? You wanna come back? Come on. Him and Sanu, they used to play together. <laughs> it's the perfect tandem. They work out, and then they got the young guy in the kill Harry. It's just for you. Well, Look, you got that, you we're going to draft the best tight end in the draft. We we're picking at 20 for the first time ever. We lost in the wild card. And we're going to be good to go. Look, man, look, look. Tom, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> right. <laughs> Please. <laughs> he gonna he gonna be walking out the door. He gonna be like, no, 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 please, please. That's, that's why Belichick was at was at Gronk's beach party, trying yeah. to sit in with the younger guys, trying to try to try, try to find something to leverage Tom Brady with. Like, oh uh, man, Gronk, what do I say to him? What, like, what, what can I do? No, he was over there saying like, yeah, see this, yeah, see Tom, Gronk didn't even invite you. We invited Triple H. And Sarah J. Yeah, apparently. And Mojo Raleigh. <laughs> and the 24 7 championship. Yeah, the 24 7 championship could come. They should have shot a skit and had Gronk win it. You can't pay your best friend. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, you can. All right, man. Let me get it back. He was like, no. Right. Like, like you can't really. <laughs> you can't whoop me. <laughs> you can't whoop me. <laughs> Gronk. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> John, you want to tell us about some of the other trades that went down today? Oh, man. Houston has no big men other than Tyson Chandler now. Clint Capella's gone. Mm-hmm. Definitely not. Uh, the 76ers traded for Alec Burks. What? Yeah, that, that's that's one of the recent ones. The Warriors sent Alec Burks and Glenn Robinson III to Philadelphia for three second rounders. You oh, fucking shit. kidding me? Yeah, man. So all the points. <laughs> um, that's when you put in the what? <laughs> what? 
Oh, my fucking head, <laughs> man. Jim just, just broke a sweat over here. <laughs> oh, my God, man. We just lost by 41 tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the Sixers are sending the Warriors a 2020 second round via Dallas and a 2021 second round via Denver and a 2022 second round via Toronto. Yeah. How you feel so about that? <laughs> he's just he's, he's stewing in it right now. It's like breaking news. <laughs> God damn, blood! Like this nigga is speechless. This nigga is the leading scorer on the team. He's just hearing all the shit he was talking, and now he's just like, oh. I feel like I just lost a Super Bowl by ten points. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him. <laughs> Tell him. <laughs> All this D-Lo talk, nigga, you want to give the niggas is like, we're going to get some pitch, y'all. Yeah, man. <laughs> shutting shutting off all, all consideration with this D-Lo deal, man. Hey, Moving nigga, on. none of you niggas is getting nothing. Moving on, fuck it. You know what the fuck the asking price was. You know what the fuck we want. It was get. cat, nigga. <laughs> it was cat. Did this nigga like Diddy. He was like, yo, if you can meet with this other deal, you know what I'm saying, that we trying to do, you feel me? If you can meet, match this number or match this pick that we want, Go right the fuck ahead. But if not, nigga, I'm keeping your fucking publishing. I'm keeping D Lo, nigga. He's staying over here. Mm-hmm. He's staying over here. He seems to be having fun over here with Draymond taking three shots a game. <laughs> Yo, Miami's still working on a, a, a three team trade. They're trying to get Oklahoma City involved, trying to get uh, Danilo Gallinari to uh, Miami along with Andre Iguodala. So keep an eye on that. See, see if that goes through or not. And Memphis. Has extended Dylan Brooks, old Dylan Brooks, oh, yeah. uh, oh, what's to the a three year Dylan, thirty-five, huh? three year thirty-five million dollars. <laughs> you ought to thank Eagle Dollar. You ought to send him a bottle of champagne for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, bro, <Rose>. say, <laughs> yeah, nigga, had his name in your mouth, nigga. Like, you know, this nigga shows some team pride. Give this nigga an extension. <laughs> <laughs> um. Sacramento traded Dwayne Dedman to Atlanta for Jabari Parker and Alex Lynn. Did they? What? Atlanta and Atlanta also gets two second round picks. Jabari Parker, wasn't he just on Sacramento for like 42 minutes? And then <laughs> you're like, hey, now you're back. Oh shit, nigga, I still got a condo out here. Right. <laughs> I ain't even giving my leash yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell going on. <laughs> hey, I'm back, y'all. What's up? <laughs> Dear, like, what's up, nigga? <laughs> this nigga back in the hood, nigga. What up, nigga? You see me throw that shit off the fucking rim and get that rebound and then get that fucking layup, nigga? Yeah, that shit was dope. Like that nigga went away and had to do jail on the weekends. Yeah, he had to come back. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you doing there, Reed? Oh, now you want to read. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, the Sixers are working on additional trades to create... Uh, some roster spots needed to add Burks and Robinson, and if they don't get that done, they're going to have to waive two players. What do you think is going to happen with them going forward with with, with Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid? Do you think they're going to continue to to do like something needs to happen with Ben Simmons? Just got a, a, a extension, not a super duper right. max. He's guess got the Clay Thompson max. Guess what? Guess what? I'm not going anywhere. Who would you rather have? Mm. Mm-hmm. Ben Simmons don't be shooting. Ben's finger still broke. He he came back playing already. Mm-hmm. Speaking Simmons of broke, speaking of broke, um, Porzingis uh, broke his nose. Oh Ooh. damn! You, yeah. you you don't you don't you don't break your nose. So somebody had to do who, that. So like, who, who yeah, who did nose? that? <laughs> Who who elbowed him? Who came down with a with a little Hadouken? Yeah. <laughs> who, who caught him? Who caught him with the ball? That's funny. Okay, so Przingis got his nose broke. All right, hey, you all right. tough nigga. All right, you be all right, nigga. You tough nigga. Niggas get their nose broke every day, B. You telling Luca? Nicki Minaj with Meek Mill. Yeah, <laughs> we can do that before we get the fuck up out of here. Hey, this go ahead and admit that y'all still love each other. That uh, you niggas right there, man. All this shit is unnecessary. It's like Romeo and Juliet. Hey, did we just find out that uh, Meek Mill's having a kid? I kind of heard another, something about another that. Kid? Another kid? He was like, my girl sitting here pregnant. 
uh, watching me argue online with another bitch and embarrassing. I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm like, going to chill. They was, they was bugging, man. She, she, she said that uh, he beat women. He said that he beat his sister, spit on her, and recorded it. Kicked her. She also said that she had a video footage of uh, the woman, I guess, that accused her brother of like asking her for money and like this whole case and everything could go away and all of that. She also, said that she had video of that. This alleged of this, I don't know how you can just bring up an alleged rape to um to um try to hurt me. I was like, I was like, didn't they find a semen on the on the on the on the kids? Pants, yeah, it's kind of kinda wild, man. Yeah, uh, listen, this is what's alleged. What you're saying about Meek Mill, that's what's alleged because there's no proof. And this was like actually tried in the court of law and all of that, but and he yeah. lost. I mean, hey, man, y'all just love each it's other. It's nasty, it's crazy. All of this because Meek liked a picture on Instagram of, of was, fucking Mr. Uh, Mr. Petty. His whole outfit on a mannequin. Yeah, that shit's funny. That shit was funny, but she, I guess she didn't like that shit, so she posted a bunch of pictures of him. If you didn't like that shit, why'd you dress him like that? Nah, oh, man, <laughs> nigga. That's wild, man. As soon as I start forgetting about nigga, here she come. Say you almost shit yourself in the in the fucking store. Ha <laughs> ha. Twitter fingers done the trigger fingers. I was like, damn, man. Then she brought up Drake, and I didn't like, I know Drake, like, flipped the table or something. Like, man, I'm God damn it. Right don't now. bring me in this I shit. Have nothing to do with nothing. I'm over here, dog. Like, what the fuck is up, man? She said, when a man gets in your face, you don't say nothing. But when you say, but you'll say something to a woman. <laughs> and I was like, damn, that's crazy, man. Because when a woman gets in your face, you won't say nothing to them, but, when, but you'll say something to a man. Nuts, man. That's Y'all still love each other, man. Just go ahead and. It's gonna happen eventually, or something. I don't know, but y'all, y'all, y'all can. I know that much. I'm gonna say that much. Y'all just, y'all can. Y'all need hey, yo. Like, th- this is the thing. Like, I don't think Meek Mill can beat up her husband, but I think Meek Mill knows niggas that can beat up her husband. I agree with. That. I see this nigga do a front flip on a trampoline. And I was like, I don't know, man. Hella form, dumbass yeah, form. But then I also see he might be fleet of foot. I also try to. I also saw him try to run a route and look catch a pass on a, on, a, on a football field at the Super Bowl, and that didn't work out too well. Yeah, much. nigga ran a go route with too much go. Yeah, too much. Uh, but Judas would go. Yeah, pure pure forces on the <laughs> cleats. Yeah, man. Out there slipping and sliding and shit. Going with the Balenciagas ain't good for turf. Yeah, this nigga with Balenciagas with blue cut jeans. Is you buck? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I think that about does it for this week's show. Anything else you guys want to mention? Go to before we get the fuck up out of here. Before we de out. Cut. <laughs> I'm a champ. <laughs> boot cut. Boot cut champ. Buckshot bike with the boot cut, bitch. Buckshot bike with the boot cut, bitch. <laughs> yeah, you're the champion. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I told you. All right, guess what? Uh, Revolution is right around the corner. Oh, Portland, NXT TakeOver is right around the corner. Oh, yeah, that's literally next week. How about that? See me, nigga. See me, nigga. It's always on the line. I'm a fighting champion. All right, with that said, make sure you're following the show at The Enemies POD on Twitter, <laughs> at Public Enemies Pod on Instagram. If you'd like to follow us directly, you can follow me at Oh My God Graham on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Jizzle, you want to let them know where to hit you? You can follow the public enemy number one. Oh, shit. The new... <laughs> Tron, Tron, you want to go ahead and tell them what it is? The new... <laughs> I mean, he just got here. <laughs> the new public enemy number one. Le champion of your mama. <laughs> At, yeah, that's me. Cross-platform. Yeah, underscore, that's underscore me with two E's, underscore. There's no underscore right there, actually. There I always say that, and there's never an underscore there. Don't put an underscore there. <laughs> oh, my God, Tron with the briefcase. He's coming in. One, two, three, damn it. We got a new public enemy 
ain't number one. That's what's gonna happen. I'm just letting y'all know. <laughs> y'all can follow me at Brian Tronic. That's B R I A N T R O N I C cross platform. That's Instagram and Twitter. And um <clears throat> somebody finna roll up with the P three case. P three case. <laughs> <laughs> The graphic coming, so we're here for it, man. I just, I just put a light bulb just went off on this nigga head. Oh, like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. By the way, like, you, like all these little jokes and shit about Trump being like load management and shit. There's been jokes and shit, but he's actually been mixing the show the entire time and doing all of these dope ass graphics and shit that you niggas are seeing, like on the Instagram and shit with the with the with the rankings and the polls and shit like that. So give it up for Tron and all of that shit. I don't know how to do none of that shit. Even, even with his absence. This nigga still been working and going crazy, so there you go. <laughs> hey, GE3 <laughs> hey. hey, yo, we see who's been in the lab. All right, we see who's been in the lab. Watch what I do with that. Right, that's, that's good. We'll figure something out, man. Till next time, tap in, stay tuned in. We'll be back next week. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, you, know, like, you guys got to say something crazy at the end because, like, usually, like, that's that's how nigga, we're drinking juice, nigga. <laughs> He's back. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. He's back. That's the name of the episode. He's back. Yeah. <laughs> Down on me, she will control me. Hey, Mama Sita, we, we could bang, we could.